So welcome to our very first Disciple Dojo live stream. I don't even know if anybody's on here yet. Is anybody in here? Who knows? People are always notoriously late for things. But we have blocked off the next three hours to celebrate this channel. And those of you who have helped us grow this channel, we passed 20,000 subscribers. That was our goal for the year 2023 was to pass 20,000 subscribers. We, we came so close. It was like late January when we hit 20,000. And just today we passed 22,000, which just blows my mind. So our goal for this year, just those of you that are jumping in, I see people in the chat. What's up? I'm here. I'm here. Hey, all. I love it. So here's what's happening. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, our goal for this year, 2024, is going to be equally ridiculous. It's going to be 100,000. We're going to try to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of this calendar year. I have no idea if we're going to do it. I didn't think we'd get close to 20,000, and we did. So that's where you guys come in. And if you like this channel, just continue to get the word out. Let folks know about Disciple Dojo. That's our goal for the year, 100,000. Now, tonight, we are celebrating 20,000 and growing this channel from like nothing to where it is today. And we're going to give away a bunch of resources tonight. So for the next three hours, each hour, we're going to give away like a big prize. But I am not exactly sure how that's going to work. And so I've had to call in help. So tonight is actually the first time Disciple Dojo has ever had a producer. Like everything I've ever done has just been fumbling on my own and trying to figure all this out and calling people and talking to people and then, you know, trying to make it work. We got my buddy Bible Hackings, Greg Richardson is here. Gregory Richardson, if you remember our episode, there he is. He's going to pop up. He was the episode we did about Christians and AI. That was one of our first videos, interviews to kind of get a surge in terms of viewers um, I wouldn't say it went viral, but but it was as close as we had <laughs> to anything at the time. So Gregory is, he's my sensei when it comes to tech. Anything online, technology, that's where I go to him. He's the resident black belt. So he's going to be running the chat. He's going to be kind of behind the scenes. He's out in Dallas. So through the miracle of technology, we're hanging out across the country. Um, he's going to be kind of moderating. And, and whenever we do giveaways, uh, he'll be the one helping me sort through it all. So Gregory, my man, it is so good to see you. Tell tell me, because I don't know. You're you're telling me how it's going to happen here. <laughs> how are we going to do some of these giveaways? FYI, if we look in the upper, um, what is it, left-hand corner, there's uh -huh. 136 people already live watching this stream as we're live right now. That's so, fantastic. Wait, I don't see that number on my end. Oh, I see, really? I see the... The stream over here it's so hidden from you then but i see it and it's climbing so thank you everyone for joining as um, awesome. lane said in the chat um remember to hit the like button remember to share this like share it live right now the giveaways are going to be awesome there's going to be giveaways based on just put your name into a wheel and we'll click the wheel and then we'll pick the name off the wheel totally random there's going to be giveaways based on trivia one author who wrote like one of the most amazing commentaries said he's gonna show up with trivia and whoever can answer the trivia question the fastest gets a freaking commentary. So <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be off the chain. Yeah, we got some guys, we're gonna have some special guests tonight that are gonna pop in when, I don't know when they're gonna pop in, but some of our guests that we've had here on the dojo are coming and some of them are gonna bring some giveaways with them. So I thought that was pretty awesome. But um, let me say, I just to show you guys, so the, the study Bible that I reviewed, obviously, that's gotten the most attention has been the Baker Illustrated Study Bible. And back before that video was ever made, I was at a used bookstore. You can see right here, Gottswald Used Bookstore. And there were a bunch of copies of this. So I picked up a, a number of them and I said, I'm going to just buy these and use these for giveaways when we hit 20,000. So what we have are three of these. These are the Baker Illustrated Study Bible in the leather binding. If you've seen the review video, you know what's in it. You know why I think this is a great study Bible. And I saw on eBay last week, somebody said that one of these sold for almost $1,000. That's ridiculous. No Bible should cost $1,000, uh, but it just shows you the demand. Well, we have three of these. So we're going to give away one of these every hour of this live stream to somebody in the chat. Got to be in the chat. 
um, and we'll we're gonna do it. That's gonna be random because I know that this is something that like, these are the big prize that most of the people wanted a chance to win. So I want everybody who's in the live stream to have a chance to win these. And Gregory, you can, Gregory, tell me when it's, um, when it's eight o'clock, just remind me, Hey, let's do a Baker giveaway. And then we'll do one at nine and then we'll finish. We'll do one at the end of the chat. Um, somebody asked me, do you know if Baker will republish the Bible guys? I don't have any insight on that. I do know that Baker reached out to me and said, we are getting a lot of pushback that we don't have this Bible and we are thinking of what it would take to bring it back. It's super expensive to bring a big study Bible to market and they, they have to weigh financially whether they can do it or not, which would require selling X number of copies and blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I don't know, but the best way for you to ensure that any study Bible you ever see gets back in print or stays in print is to let the publishers know, like vocally let them know, send them emails, send them forms to their website, whatever that, I mean, publishing is a business. And so if a business knows that the customers want a certain item, there's a reason why things like life application Bible never go out of print. You know, people like them, they give them, they buy them, they make a lot of noise. So just, just FYI, I don't have any inside track with Baker. I don't have any inside track with any publishers, actually. I mean, I have some friends that work at uh, Lexum and, and a couple of others, but it's not like I'm in any meetings or anything like that. So um, let's see. What do we have? Okay. So Gregory, we have, I have a bunch of stuff that I want to start like this first se segment. I want to do some giveaways and I have some questions. Let me pull up my note file here. I accidentally closed that down. Um, I had some questions I was going to use as kind of giveaways and put it in the chat and then people can be eligible to win. So does that sound good on your end, producer? Sounds fantastic. I, Don't I got be shy, call. Gregory. Don't be shy. The people want to know you're part of this. So <laughs> got you. I got to call this out. Um, Tucker out in the chat um, just said this. Hey, Jam, just started the Bible for the rest of us with a group at church and introducing them to the channel. Happy for you, 20K. I Love think it. that is a big part of why JM does what he does. Like I, I'm certain that's why the dojo was created and why it's here. I, I happen to know a little bit of the backstory that um, you know it started off as him recording content. I thought it was for a, a church or a class or something yeah. along those lines. Yeah, small group church, church content. Mm -hmm. So like to see that it's actually basically working at that level still, that's just yeah. God. That's God. That's awesome. And and I Tucker, I've known Tucker since he was a wee little lad because he uh, we were in the same church that my dad pastored like, I don't know, 30 years ago or something. So it's awesome uh, to see people that have been kind of following along for so long. And Tucker, give a shout out to any of my uh, Forest Hill folks if you're see if they're watching this. Um, OK, so, Greg, here's what I want to do. So I want to. I want to highlight something real quick. A viewer sent me, and I want to give a shout out. This viewer, Sandy Wiggins. So Sandy sent me just out of the blue. She makes these cool um, notebooks, like journaling notebooks, and has a store on Kindle. They're really cool. They're just like nice. Um, they look like kind of like vintage, you know, just where you can keep notes. And, and she was nice enough to send me two of them. And I said, can I actually use, I'm not a huge journaler personally, but these are beautiful. And I would love for somebody who does journal to have these. And I wanted to give a shout out her Amazon uh, store. So if you go on Amazon, it's called Arden Fields, A-R-D-E-N Fields. Uh, that's her store name. You can check out the designs. And she's just like, yeah, just make these notebooks and sell them online. And it was so nice of her to send them to me. So I wanted to give a shout out right at the top of the show. I don't know if she's in the chat or not, but uh, Sandy, I appreciate that so much. And so what I wanted to do, the first giveaway is for like the contemplative journalists, journalers out there. I got to, I got to chime in. I got to Go chime ahead. in real quick. We have a, our first guest that's about to be added in. Are you ready for your first guest, JM? Sweet. Give me, let's, let's do this giveaway and then let's get them in. Can we do that? Oh, oh no. Absolutely. 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 Listen, look at you. You've already let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> Well, the viewers is like, let's let's do this real quick. Let's do this first giveaway and then bring in our first guest. Does that work? Absolutely. All right, sweet. 
Um, this is, so like I said, I'm going to give away for the journalers um, two of these books, these notebooks, journaling notebooks that she created that are really nice. And uh, I don't know if you saw it. Well, we've reviewed the filament Bible here, but filament has individual biblical books that are notebooks. And so this is, they sent me to look at, this is John, the gospel of John. And it's a notebook with the, uh, my camera can't really catch it. Uh, you, the scripture is on this page on the left side. And then this page is all journaling and it's keyed to filaments uh, app at the top of each scripture page. So they have the whole set of these, but this is John. And then our friends at Lexham press sent me this book pierced by love, which is all about Lectio Divina, the divine reading, the contemplative tradition of reading and meditating on scripture. So I wanted to put all these together as kind of like a journaling bundle giveaway to somebody out there who's into that and give these away to a viewer. So Gregory, how should we, how can I do this the easiest way? What would you suggest? Should we ask her a, tr a question, a comment, or do you want to just, should we put like, like if we say put journal, if you want to enter to win this and then for the next I, I got one. Know? I got one that I would suggest deserves a win for this. And we, you and I will figure out how we'll make the logistics work. But okay. I think this is probably the first live streamer that's viewing this on Tuesday at 1 p.m. in New Zealand right now. I would suggest Deborah Birch deserves a win for that. Man, that's that's amazing. That is super impressive. So Deborah, um, I'll put JM's email in the chat. Email JM your full mailing address, and we will get that shipped out to you tomorrow. Yes. How's that? Well, so I don't know about tomorrow. Let's not maybe let's not, not overpromise on the timing maybe here. Not tomorrow. Uh, maybe not tomorrow. <laughs> we'll, we'll get it shipped out soon. Um, yes, and and this one because it is uh, small and relatively light, and it's the first one. Absolutely, I love that idea. Just so you guys know, though, if you're outside of the continental U.S., super glad you're here. Uh, if you win anything, you're you're more than welcome to enter to win you may have to pay the shipping. That's the only thing we, we disciple dojo. Cause we got a lot of resources. It's going to cost us a lot of money to ship everything. We can ship us domestic media mail. And that's what we're, we're able to do. If you are an international viewer and you do win, uh, you know, get in touch and we may need you to help us with the shipping costs to your country, however far away you may be. But does that sound good? Does that work? Okay. Let's do. So, I'm going to put these, uh, Gregory, give me the, I'm going to keep a name. We're going to, I'm going to do this old school and just keep a post-it note of whoever wins. So I don't forget, but you have to keep track on your end of <laughs> who's winning. Or what. what was the name of this winner? Was it Deborah who? Deborah Birch, B-I-R-C-H. Our first winner for tonight, all the way from New Zealand. New Zealand's on my bucket list, Deborah. So I hope I make it there someday and uh, we can meet up in person. That'd be amazing. Okay, so we have a guest, right, Gregory? Yes, we do. And and guys, not just any guest. This is an esteemed guest. This is a two-time Disciple Dojo. Uh, he would be a, a, a blue belt, a Disciple Dojo blue belt in the rankings here. So, yeah, whenever you're ready, let's see who we have. Ta-da! What is up, my friend? Hey there. Guys, this is Dr. Jay Sklar. You may remember Jay from our episode, two episodes. We did Leviticus and Numbers, and he is rocking his Leviticus gear tonight. Jay, it's good to see you, man. How are you? It's great to see you. I am I was a bit confused for a moment, though, because you said you had an esteemed guest coming up, and then <laughs> there I was on the screen, and I thought, wait, where's, where's the esteemed one? So great to be with you. Gotta you got to love, you gotta love our Reformed brothers. They're so humble and... Uh, Congrats on getting to 20,000 viewers. That's yeah, amazing. right. Bam. It's wild. I appreciate it. Yeah. I, probably 19,000 of those are people who saw your uh, Leviticus episode and were just like, <laughs> I got to be part of this. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sure. That's what did you, we, we ran into each other briefly at SBL in yeah. the elevator. And uh, what have you been up to since then? What's what's going on in Jay Sklar's world? Uh, since then, it's just been... Uh, classes have started for the spring semester. So just trying to do those. I'm teaching a class right now, actually, 
that has a New Testament, Old Testament, and systematic theology professor in the classroom uh-huh. every single class period. That's awesome. It is. You, I think you mentioned that in one of our episodes that 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 was that that they you guys team teach and kind of chime yeah. in and challenge each other and and yeah. synthesize everything. It's wonderful. I learned That's so, so much. Cool. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Well, you you said, I believe, that you had uh, were would donate something to give yes. away. Yes, I have a couple potential giveaways here. Oh it, man! It depends if people can answer the questions. I, well, I'm you sure know, that, that's that matters. So, the first giveaway would be exegetical commentary on the Old Testament in the Zikot series. That's and, a great uh, commentary. Yeah. I see somebody asked, where do I teach? Teach at Covenant mm-hmm. Theological Seminary, St. Louis, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. Uh, some would say best seminary in the world, but uh, <laughs> in any case. so Some, this, including like 50% of the people on the screen right now so would say least, best seminary. At least in the world. 50%, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the other 50% we will still love. But anyway, <laughs> so this, this came out in August of this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of some of your viewers might know I, I had done another commentary on Leviticus for the Tyndale series, which is a yes. bit, bit shorter. It's meant more for um, the lay person. This one goes into quite a bit more detail. Uh, and in oh, oh, and it also um, you don't get through a chapter without advice on how would you teach or preach this chapter, mm-hmm. and especially how does it relate to Jesus. So, yeah. in line with that, here's here's the question. Uh, okay. And the rules are you can't use a any Bible software or you just no phones. You just got to use your mind for this one. Right. Honor system, guys. Honor you, you system. Will be, That's right. This is for a Bible commentary. So please don't yeah. cheat in order to win a Bible commentary. <laughs> God will not honor that. <laughs> uh, absolutely. All right. So my favorite verse in Leviticus, it's the one I say every time I take communion, goes like this. And the question is. Uh, chapter and verse, where is this found in Leviticus? Ooh. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I, I have given it to you on the altar to atone for your lives. For it is the blood by means of the life that makes atonement. Mm. Where in Leviticus is that found? Chapter and verse. That is, that's an that's tough. That's a good one. Guys, in the yeah. chat, if you know it, leave it um gregory's um, keeping track and jay will be able to say the first um, person to correctly not seeing it yet some and you can guess close. guys i mean go for it some are getting close <laughs> no not quite oh i see it i see it the first one i'm seeing is i uh, i might say this incorrectly irenes nunes irenes j nunes looks like he got leviticus 17 11 was the answer Nice. Well done. Well done. Well done. So, Irenis, if you would send your address to uh, JM and he can forward it to me, that would be awesome. Will that work? Yeah. Yeah. Greg, how do you want to? How do we want to make sure that that this doesn't get lost? So we get the right person. Oh, there's the email address. Yeah. So if you win, send an email to info at biblehacking dot org. Info at biblehacking dot org. Uh, so Irenes, you are the winner, uh, send your email there. We'll be able to get in touch. I'll be able to get it, the information to Jay, and then he can get that. That's an awesome Leviticus commentary, by the way. Uh, we had him, if you haven't seen the episode where Jay and I talked about Leviticus, check it out, go back and look on the playlist and our interviews playlist and check out the other one that we did on numbers as well. Cause it's, it's fun having Jay in the dojo. Well, and that's a great segue. Uh, I won't change my shirts, but I would have another <laughs> shirt here. Yes. What what is, oh, what about numbers? Yes. yes. So, Love um, it. So second, second giveaway for the evening, uh, from me at least, is the Story of God Bible Commentary Series. I did numbers for this. This came out in, I think, uh, October uh, of last year. And uh, this series is, again, more, it's more at, it's not uh in-depth academic level. Uh, of course, I've still written it, having looked at the Hebrew and analyzed the Hebrew, um, mm. but meant to be just solid exposition and Christ-centered, full of application, the end of each chapter. So for this one, the question is, 
where in Numbers do you find prophecies whose near fulfillment would be in the Davidic king, but whose far fulfillment would be in Jesus? So prophecies mm. about kingship, which chapter in Numbers, prophecies about kingship whose near fulfillment would be King David, but whose far fulfillment would be in the far greater uh, King David, that is Jesus. All right. That's a good question. Oh, I just saw it. Young Revival 97 got it with Numbers 24. Nice. Young Numbers Revival 24. 97. Congratulations. We see a lot of people that are close. Numbers 22, 25, 23. Yeah. 24. Right. Nice. Hey, so we had a question real quick. Somebody asked, and um, I can't see my scrolling isn't always as up to date. So, Greg, you help me monitor. Somebody asked, they said, can we only enter once? I don't want to risk not winning the Baker Illustrated Bible. The, the Baker Illustrated that we're giving away, those are going to be given away randomly to people who are in the chat when we do the giveaway. So if you, you can enter any of the other things, if you win something, obviously we may not choose the same person winning over and over. Um, but entering the ones that we have questions for won't mean that you can't be eligible to win the one of the three copies of the Baker that we're giving away. So just to clear that up. FYI. Um, Jay, that's awesome. Thank you so much. You bet. Great to be with you, JM. Hope yeah. You guys so what are you up to? Here. What are you up to? Um, this you're teaching. What's tell the, the current class you're teaching again? Yeah, it's a class on biblical theology. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, one of us will lecture the other. The other two guys are kind of like those guys in the Muppets up in the balcony. Right, you know, right, right. Sort of cat calling in. Yeah, you yes. don't know how many peas are in Philippians. That kind of thing. But, uh, who hired this guy? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, That's awesome. No, it, it's so much fun. And I think one of the biggest takeaways students actually have is, wow, you can have uh, people who don't always see things exactly the same way, and they don't have to fight about it. Yeah. You know, you can still really interact with one another with with love and respect and that kind of thing. And so, yeah, it's just such a privilege to be able to teach with those guys. Yeah, I love it. That's fantastic. Guys, check out Jay. Um, follow him. Jay, you're on. What's your social media? Where can people follow you easiest? Uh, I'm on Instagram, but That's right, uh, I, I never post there. Um, Facebook, but I have a website that if, especially if you're preaching or teaching in the Pentateuch. Yes, yes, yes. Give that yeah. address. Preach and teach the Bible.com. Yes. Or Guys, if you just search out. for Jay Sklar website, you'll find it. But yeah, Jay Sklar, uh, his, his preach and teach the Bible.com. There are great resources on there. Check the interview episodes that Jay and I did. I have in the show notes linked to all of his work as well. And if you're interested in studying that, any viewer out there could benefit from either of his commentaries, but particularly the numbers commentary in the story of God series. It is fantastic. Even if you're just teaching a Sunday school class or you're in a Bible study or you just wanted to go deeper, absolutely recommend Jay's work. So Jay, it's so good to see you, man. Thank you, you so much do. for popping in and celebrating our, our 20K and be thinking about what you want to do when we hit 100K. That's our next milestone. So okay, I don't Sounds know what we'll good, do. Man. We have to up the ante. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right, brother. Great to Thanks see you. Take you. care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Nice. And we have in the lurks, in the, 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 the lurch waiting, we have another amazing guest. Um, are you ready for yet another guest jam? Yes. And I know exactly. I'm going to do a giveaway after our next guest that will fit with the thrust of his ministry. I think if it's the same guest I'm thinking of, if not, Love I'll it. adjust on the fly and nobody on the other side will know. Um, real <laughs> quick, somebody asked me to show the first giveaway. So that they could, they said, show the first one in the chat so we can see what it is and order it. Um, it was a bundle. So they were the notebooks from Arden Fields is the name of the Amazon store for the nice journaling notebooks. Then the Tyndale, I mean, yeah, by Tyndale, the filament uh, notebook versions of the books of the Bible. This is the Gospel of John. And then from Lexham Press, our friends at Lexham. Uh, this book by Hans Boer, I can't pronounce that last name, Boersema, B-O-E-R-S-M-A. It's probably like Bersema or something that I just don't know how to pronounce. Pierced by Love. Uh, it's about the Lectio Divina, 
uh, way of reading scripture, the sacred reading. So we're going to be sending those to our friend in New Zealand. And then, yeah, Are let's do it. Your guest, here we go. Who's going to show up in the dojo? What's up? Hey, the, uh, uh, the, the OG YouTube Bible ginger. Yeah. Who's, like uh, Thong of whose sandals I'm unworthy to tie. How many other uh, redheaded Bible YouTubers are there? I, I can't think of any. We've cornered the market, my friend. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mark, congratulations you, to you. Thank you so much. Your channel. I want viewers to know. Uh, Mark's been on the show before. We've talked about a number of issues and, and concepts related to Bible translation. And Mark's channel, when, when Disciple Dojo, when we made the decision to move to not me just filming with my phone in a restaurant, the Bible study I was leading, but actually doing it, uh, your channel was one of the ones that I looked at and said, I want it to be that level of, of quality, like uh, the presentation, content, uh, thoughtfulness, interact, like you were one of the ones that I looked to. So it's, it's really cool to have you here as we do our first yeah, live. Stream. Thank you. That, that's an honor. I, I didn't know that. I really appreciate that. And I mean, I don't think it's all that high of a bar, but you've met it. I like your quality. <laughs> I definitely appreciate the, um, the thought that goes into the setup there. And for one thing, I've learned a lot about audio. I still have tons to learn. I often mess it up, but mm -hmm. I never have problems with your audio. That's something else a YouTuber comes to appreciate. Well, it, it really is. And that is, I can take zero credit for that. That goes to my friend and worship pastor, Chris Macedo. He literally came over and, and set it up. for. He set it up for me, showed me how things work. And then he took it all apart and was like, now you set it up. And ah, smart. <laughs> so that when he left, I wouldn't be high and dry figuring it out on my own. Um, but yeah, it yeah. makes a huge difference. I, I was kind of high and dry. I mean, I had YouTube to help me, but I always cared more about the visuals and spent more time on them. I got a lot of help from uh, Caleb Pike at DSLR Video Shooter. I bought one of his courses. It's really great for my Sony a7 IV. But uh -huh. then I was on Sean McDowell's channel, and uh, that just has such a huge reach. Yeah, uh, Maybe he used to be redheaded. I don't know. <laughs> He's got gray <laughs> hair now. Um, and somebody watching that channel what, is a Christian who is works for a police department, but he used to have a side business doing videography and he had some nice equipment just sitting around that, mm -hmm. you know, COVID kind of killed his business and he was waiting to see what to do with it. He was just about to sell it and he saw me make an appeal like I really could use some more support and he brought me some really great stuff, including you can't see it, but a uh, mix pre three audio interface that I didn't even know I needed it, but it's just like saved right. my life. And uh, it helps me use the Shure SM7B. And he's got a, he gave me a nice microphone and stuff above a boom mic. Anyway, God, God's people have been gracious and generous, seems like to both of us then. They really have. I mean, this, this, all of the equipment, not all, but most of the equipment here was similarly donated um, and, and user. I mean, even like Gregory, who's volunteered to be the producer of this live stream, just saying, Hey man, I want to support what you're doing. I like it. And, and it really is people, people don't realize I don't know what people think about doing things on YouTube, but I don't think most people realize how much work goes in on the front end to get it to what they see. And, and I didn't, I mean, I, I only had a vague idea until I started and right. everyone's like, man, this really does take a lot more than I thought. So people that come along and help uh, donors, like people, I know you yeah. do, uh, do, you do a Patreon, right? Yeah, I have That's, Patreon, yeah. I have Buy Me a Coffee, I've got YouTube memberships. I, I came to realize about two years in, I, I really cannot do this alone. I delighted yeah. to do it for free, I really did. Logos actually graciously let me use some equipment that I was using for work, and I was at home anyway, you know, working remotely like we all were. Yep. They let me use it for my YouTube channel. But over time, you know, my personal YouTube and Logos YouTube is separated, and I really needed to have my own stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm just so grateful for the support that I've gotten. Yeah. Well, the chat, I'm just seeing there's, uh, um, so Amptown One, longtime viewer here, she said, um, uh, what, where's, oh, oh my goodness, he is a superstar with five exclamation points. So we have a little cross pollination in our audiences, which is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Mark inspired me to go out and buy a KJV Bible and read it because I was so curious <sighs> about it. 
That's that cool. happens yeah. as long as people read God's word with understanding. I mean, that's the goal here. The goal is not, as many people think, to get rid of the King James Version. It's to make sure that people are understanding God's word. And typically that means reading it in their own English. But if I give people the ability to read it in Elizabethan English, you know, more power to them. Yeah. Oh, somebody just said, I just bought the Lexham English Septuagint, a new translation. So I just reviewed the Lexham English Septuagint. Oh. Uh, here on the channel, along with the Nets and uh, the old Brenton. And um, that was one of the, I remember you had a hand in. Yes, I did. That about. Just yeah. a small hand. I was in one of the last, like of the lines of editors on that one. I really enjoyed doing that. I also did help with the typography. Um, those. I the wondered head. why it looks so yes. good. And yeah, that, well, I talked about in the video, <sighs> this is laid out beautifully and the, the wide margins. I'm going to, yep. I'm going to gripe with you because I know you had no say in this. The only yeah, thing sure, that Lexham's got to step it up on is the paper's too thin. You got to, you guys have to. Put yeah, it I didn't paper. have any say in that. I know that's why I'm teasing you. <laughs> it's a perennial problem with Bibles, right? And I yeah. what I've heard from those who care about such things and work on it is that the processes that gave us like cotton-based rag paper that was thin and opaque back in the 19th century, they're carcinogenic, and mm. so we just cannot have really really nice paper like we used to. I past. mean, oh, some well. things might be worth the hazard, though. A really nice paper. <laughs> <laughs> I do wonder. Surely someone can find a way because it is a problem. It's a big problem. Yeah. Well, um, I I want to do a giveaway, but, but I wanted to see if you have, and, and if you don't, that's fine. Because guys, this is not like all the guests came on and they're going to give stuff away. Um, but I wanted to do a giveaway and I wanted to see if you could tell me how like together we could do it. So one of the things, and you've talked about back in the day before digital, a lot of times you had to yeah. use parallel Bibles. And this was of the parallel Bibles that were out there to me. And this is just my own. I know you have, I think you've talked about your favorite, but yeah. this was my favorite because it's the NIV, which is sort of like, you know, middle of the road, evangelical, right. the NASB, the New American mm -hmm. Standard, kind of literal the King James, which is mm -hmm. also in that literal uh, format, but obviously written a little bit older. And then the New Living Translation, which is a fantastic translation, but very much, you know, thought right. for thought. So what I wanted to do was give this away to a viewer. But I wanted to know what if you had an idea of how we could do it, because this is all we're just flying by the seat of our pants yeah. tonight and just giving stuff away. And so. What do you think? Is there like, could you think of a good Ooh. thing that they could put in the chat and that we can, Greg can choose a winner from, or, I mean, it can even be like, tell, you know, leave a comment why, whatever is your favorite Bible or, or you could say, do you have a favorite false friend? I was going to say uh, the first person to put five false friends mm. up in the chat will get not only that comparative study Bible, but I'll send them a copy of authorized as well. I'll oh. toss that in, in honor of you. James Fantastic. Michael. Just oh, get me the address and I'll That is super mail. generous. So authorized that the viewers didn't catch the episode with Mark and I. These uh it's his book about the King James only controversy and, and the King James Bible. And it's a wonderful book. I read it back when uh when I first came across it. So first person, five false friends. In the King James version. They can't just type the words five false friends. I'm seeing that in the <laughs> chat. You guys are cracking me up. <laughs> okay, somebody came through here, looks like. Uh, incontinent, enlargement, judgment, honest, excess. I'm looking on a tiny, tiny screen. I can't see, see who that was. That's that's Amptown One. That is your, okay. you said you're a superstar. Well, then as far as I'm concerned, that I can't it. think of a more deserving person that yeah. would win it. Nice. Great. All right. Well, congratulations, Amptown One. You're going to get, give your, you send the email to info at biblehacking.com so Gregory can have your contact. I'm going to send you this parallel Bible and Mark will make sure you get a copy of uh, authorized. Yep. So. yep. Gregory, I know Gregory as well, and uh, he can get me the address info. I'll, I'll happily send it on. That's awesome. Um, do you have anything coming up that, that we can share with viewers or are you just continuing? To I do actually. And... Yeah. Well, I'm also continuing to plug away. I don't, know where I find the time. I, I kind of put YouTube scripting in all the corners of my life. <laughs> uh, but I am finishing up a sequel to Authorize called Provisionally, but I think this will be the final title, KJV Words You Don't Know You Don't Know. And whereas oh. Authorize talked about the concept of false friends and mm -hmm. gave about 35 examples, 
I only talked in detail through a few of them, and that was earlier in this odd ministry that I think the Lord has given me. And I didn't have the process worked out quite as well, um, or even some of the ideas. I just hadn't encountered enough examples to really refine it all. So I think it was fine enough for that book, but I really wanted not only to list out some more false friends to prove the concept, mm -hmm. but to teach people who read the King James how to fish. I really believe that it's not sufficient to put out lists of words archaic words in the King James and tell people what their modern day equivalents are. King James only have already done that and actually done a fine job, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, they've caught a number of the things that I've caught. I think in order both to really understand your King James and to understand why it is that people like me who love the King James are nonetheless saying it should not be our standard in pulpits and other institutional contexts anymore. You have to not only know the the lists of false friends or dead words or where to find them, but you have to be able to fish for them. You have to be able to verify them for yourself. Then you will see firsthand the kind of the the kinds of effects that language change has on Bibles over time. And I think that lesson applies to far beyond English because every language in the world changes over time. And so every yeah. Bible translation will ultimately at some point come to need revision for basically the same set of linguistic reasons. And I'd really like to inoculate as much of the church as possible against the kinds of onlyisms that have afflicted us over time before the King James, it was the Vulgate, mm -hmm. you know, and before the Vulgate, it was the old Itala where uh, Augustine and Jerome were talking about this congregation that erupts into a riot when the word for gourd is changed in Jonah. So this is not a new problem, but <laughs> right. um, I'd like to think that this is maybe a newish solution that might just last and go beyond English. Yeah. I love it. I love the work you're doing. Uh, somebody asked in the chat, what's your YouTube channel? And we put it there so folks can go check it out. Uh, Mark Word, Mark Ward on words. Um, and if somebody also said, we had somebody that said, I'm a new Christian. I don't even know what false friends are. Don't worry. Not all of the giveaways are going to be this level of nerdiness. Um, right. We're going to tailor different ones, but false friends, check out Mark's channel. He has a whole playlist False friends are words that used to mean one thing in English and have a different meaning today than they did back then, but we don't realize it because they're so familiar to us, we think. That's why he right. calls them false friends. So he talks about that in his book, check out Authorized, um, and follow, go subscribe, follow his channel. He's he's doing it, and, and, and one of the people out there that I have tremendous respect for uh, we've talked, you know, across theological disagreements, across church right. traditions, we come from different traditions, right. but we, we, I feel a kindred spirit when I see the work you're doing and the way you interact. And it's just, I can't say enough of, uh, good about, uh, Likewise. our friend Mark Ward. So guys go I, check him out. Mark, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for having me. God bless was, you in your ministry. Ditto to you, my friend. Great to see you. Bye -bye. All right. I'm going to look at the Mark where your work is amazing. I agree. Um, false friends are no longer used in today's vocabulary. No, almost Bree D says, so false friends are words that are no longer used in today's vocabulary. Not quite. They are words that are used in today's vocabulary, but they're used with a different meaning than what they meant in the King James. So go hop over to Mark's website um, and he can tell you all about it. He's, he's the man when it comes to that. All right, let's do some more giveaways. We I need to give away more stuff. I got a huge stack of stuff, and I need to give it away. Um, Gregory, you holding up good over there? I I can't hear you. Yes. There yeah. we go. I don't leave me hanging, man. I'm I'm alone. I'm scared. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing out here by myself. This uh, is this and, is going amazingly. Um, love <laughs> the engagement. Love the chats, love the, the people that are just engaging with the stream. Continue sharing this out with your friend. Um, Jam's gonna be here for hours, a couple of hours more. Lots more giveaways to go. We haven't even done any of the humongous, ginormous mm -hmm. giveaways yet. So like, there's lots more fun to be had. Yeah, and in fact, um, let's do, I wanna do a giveaway for, I wanna do a couple of resources um, I want to do a couple of resources for this one. Let me let me get my question. I had some questions that I had typed up, so I want to make sure. And Gregory, if you see a, an interesting question that comes up or a comment, do not hesitate to stop me and pop it on the screen so I can interact with it. I just can't see them as they're all coming in. Um, somebody asked, what's a great study Bible for beginners? Sheila Hudson. That's a great question. It would depend on if it's a beginner adult or a beginner 
young reader. We're actually going to do a giveaway for a, a young reader uh, Bible, which is this uh, kids visual study Bible. If you saw the episode, we've done two episodes where we have reviewed study Bibles for children and or just children's Bibles. And this one ended up being the kids visual study Bible ended up being the one that I thought was, you know, kind of th this is the one I've recommended to people since then. I think it's a great overall kids Bible. So I want to give this away and I want to give away also the girl's life application uh, study Bible. Now, let me just make sure. So everybody knows in the chat, the Bibles that I'm giving away, some of them are new, like in the sense that people sent them or I picked them up at a bookstore and I've only flipped through them once or twice for the review. Others I got used. Like, like I, I don't get sent all the Bibles I review. A lot of them I have to buy with my own money. In doing this channel so some i picked up when i go to a used bookstore i always pop in and I see what kind of bibles do they have you never know so some of them the ones that we give away most of them are going to be used and they're either going to have some of my highlights in them as i've gone through the review or like this one somebody this was somebody's bible i bought it in a used bookstore and it belonged to uh maya and it was given to her at her first communion by her family back in 2013. so there's a mixture of new and used, but I wanted to just get these. These aren't doing me any good here in the Disciple Dojo library, but they could do some good for people out there that may need it. So let's do this. Um, I want to give away the Girls Life Application Study Bible. And this would be for tween, like older than tweens, this would not be it. So like maybe elementary school to middle school this would be suitable. Uh, kids visual would be elementary uh, all the way up through middle school. Uh, it's a little, it's not as kidsy as the other, uh, but both very good. So let's do this. The first person to tell me um, when, when Jesus raised the girl, the little girl from the dead, if you can type and you can use Bible software for this, I don't care. Type in, what did he say to her in Aramaic that meant little girl rise? If you can tell me what that is, first person to tell me that, I'm going to send you this one. Second person to tell me that, I'm going to send you this one. So put that in the chat and let me catch up in some of these while you're doing that. Uh, oh, oh, there we go. Mark Walker, you're first. Uh, Talitha Kumi, Mark Walker, congratulations. This is on its way to you. And who was right after that? Did you catch it, Gregory? No, I did not catch it. Uh, Jose. Yet. So Mark Walker and Jose uh, Pelliser. Yeah, I see it. I got him. Or Pelliker. Pelliker, Pelliser. Jose. Mark and Jose. These are coming your way. If you... In, uh, email Gregory your information. He can get it to you. Viewers, we see some others. Some of you said it in English. That was good. Little daughter arise, little girl get up. Uh, yes, it was Talitha Kum. Oh, somebody actually put it in the Aramaic font. Colton Honeycutt, bring in the Aramaic. Well done. <clears throat> um, let's see what else we're going to do. All right, we're going to do one more. Remember, go ahead and email that shipping information to info at biblehacking.org. Do that right yeah. now before you forget. We yeah, guys, any anybody that wins, if we call your name and you win, send the email to Bible Hacking, info at Bible Hacking, so that we know where to ship to. And once again, if you are international, you're going to have to pay for shipping, for international shipping. We just we can't do that. So if you are international and you're like, well, I don't want to pay, you know, whatever it is for that. Um, then let us know and we can choose another winner. All right, let's keep going because we had a lot of people enter that one. So I want to give another chance. Um, we have another Bible. This is cool. This was donated. We're going to do a couple that um, for, so this Bible was the Amplified Bible and I've reviewed the Amplified Study Bible here. Um, and this is... Yeah, this is the Amplified Study Bible. So 
I didn't review this binding. The one I reviewed was the hardback, but I reviewed it here on the channel. But a viewer sent this. They were getting rid of uh, kind of clearing out their shelf. And it's from what I can tell, it's brand new. There's no marks. There's no nothing in it. And also it has a Bible case, like a really nice with a ribbon bookmark and a place for your highlighters and your pens and all of that. And it zips up all together. And so this is going to go out to somebody out there. And let me see. I had a group of questions. So what I want to do is give this to somebody tell me. And we'll just for like, I don't know, Gregory, if you can keep track of like 60 seconds or something, I think that'll be enough time. Mm -hmm. um, tell me your favorite woman character in the Bible and why. So don't just put a name up there. You got to tell me why. And 60 you seconds is running right now. 60 seconds. So in the next 60 seconds, I'm going to be looking at the chat and your favorite female character in the Bible and why. And you will win this Amplified Study Bible with a very nice care. It even has a handle. Look at that. <clears throat> Someone said Phoebe. first. To so somebody to did ask, by the way, should they specify what they want in the email? Yes. Go ahead. And when you send that email, specify what they want. All right. Who do we have? We have Phoebe. First to preach Romans. I like that. Um uh, Deborah, her hands were so big that people sat under her palm. <laughs> Deborah, she is a warrior judge. Rahab, faith to be saved from her bad situation. Oh, there's, there's, there's. These are good. These are good. Ruth, what devotion? How are we doing on time, Gregory? We are at 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60 seconds. All right, time. So that's the entry for this one. Um, the these are some really good ones and i am gonna pick uh oh where did i just see it i saw this one um ah they keep refreshing and i keep losing them <laughs> is there a setting i can do gregory so it doesn't just slow it down no <laughs> get less subscribers don't get twenty two thousand. <laughs> all right um uh, yeah these just have to be haphazard um uh, who who said Holda? Somebody said Holda. I was looking at that. I knew you would say that. There it is. Yeah, on the screen right now. Rima, Holda. She was the one who went when to when they discovered the scrolls. Yes, yes. Who was that? Who was the user? It's, it's scrolling too fast. I can't. Rima. See. It's it's on the screen right now. Um, R E. -M -M -A. Okay, great. E M A. Yes, yes. Oh, I think that's Renee Emma. I think I think so because she's a longtime viewer. Um, uh, or Ren. Renima. Ren <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, um, Holda doesn't get enough love. So the fact that that is who you chose, I love it. If you don't know who Holda is, Google her. Uh, check her out in the Bible app. Fascinating story. Had to explain, had to teach men of Israel about the faith. Mm, scandalous. Uh, but I, I thought women weren't allowed to teach men. Right? Oh, dear. That. You're about to open up a can of worms in the comment section with that one. <laughs> uh, Rima, Renema, Renee Enema, Renema, <laughs> get your information to Gregory. And that is on its way to you. Um, we're coming up on the first hour. We got about 10 more minutes, right? Does that look right to you? Eight Greg? minutes to the first hour. Okay. So, and FYI, guys. There's still some surprise guests that are going to pop up into the chat. So keep you your never fingers. know. There's probably going to be more giveaways, et cetera, et cetera. Et yeah. Cetera. You just never know who's going to show up and step onto the mat in the dojo. Um, so I wanted to, man, this chat is just flying. Uh, I'm glad Gregory's here because I would not be able to do this on my own. We have some more that we want to give away. Um, I need to, I need to get my right question though. I want to make sure. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. I have reviewed recently both the he reads truth and she reads truth study Bibles. If you saw those have been some of people's favorite thumbnail, especially for the she reads truth where I really channeled my, my, um, my feminine qualities <laughs> for that one. So 
I'm going to give these away both together as a set to someone. Um, somebody said they look forward to having an archaeological study Bible. I'm not giving one of those away because I can't find them uh, anywhere, but I totally would if I could because they're my favorite if you watch that video. So let's talk about um, some of the giveaways are random. Yes, some of the giveaways are random. And so if you're worried about, I don't know enough Bible, I'm a new Christian. We got you. Don't worry. Uh, I still got a ton of stuff to get through. But he reads truth. She reads truth. We're going to give these away. And I'm going to have you say, let me see which question I had picked out. Um, the, okay. So for this one, here's what I want you to, uh, to answer what is the hardest let me say i, I want to phrase it. i don't want to phrase it exactly like that um as you can either answer this as a man or as a woman what is the what's a challenge in reading and understanding scripture from either the position of a man or position of a woman? That's the question. So what is, you know, like if you're a man, it's hard to relate to passages about God's love or something like, you know, or if you're a woman, uh, it's a patriarchal culture and I feel like we're second class citizens, whatever. What is a, a, a challenge in understanding scripture, particularly from the perspective of a man or a woman, not just a general challenge, like I, I don't know the history or I don't but a gender-based challenge for you. That's the question we're going to do. So let's do, you got a timer, Gregory? we we'll do a minute. Yeah. Timer All right. is up. All right, another, so you have one minute. That's the challenge, a gender-based challenge in understanding scripture, whether you are a man or you are a woman. And on the screen, it says, what is a challenge? And so I'm being very specific. It is a gender-based challenge. I'm seeing a lot of things like context, cultural context. I get it, but those aren't gender-based. I mean something about being a man reading scripture or a woman reading scripture. Uh, Ooh, that was a good one. Uh, uh, these are some really good ones. These are some really good ones. We're getting both men and women. I love this. Nice. 49 seconds. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Oh, man. Y'all making it hard for me to have to pick one of these. Yeah, I do not envy you. One <laughs> minute. We're at one minute. All right. That's one minute. All right. Time. Um, so I'm going to look through these. Man, these are some really good ones. Um, I'm going to pick, okay, I'm going to pick, uh, Arian Adkins Zell as a woman, how to apply the word to me when most of the scripture seems to be male centered. This was a lot of you put something similar to this and with so many, I just have to pick one. Uh, and this one's on the screen. So, uh, Arlene. I, that is that is definitely a challenge, um, and yeah, I I completely agree. I'm going to send both of these to you. Uh, if you saw the review, you'll know my Hold thoughts. Them up. What did she win? Hold them up. These are the She Reads Truth and the He Reads Truth set. So both of these together, I'm going to get them shipped to you. If you saw our review, you saw the difference between these two, and that's why I wanted to give them away as a set. I think if you were going to use these – that is the way to use them as a set because of how they complement one another to use a fun theologically loaded term. So go ahead and send out that shipping information to info at biblehacking.org, Arlene. Thank yes, you. Arlene, That's get great. the uh get the information to us so we can get that to you. All right, we're gonna switch gears uh and do a couple of different ones now. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. All right, so some of you saw our reviews of the manga Bibles. 
we reviewed Manga Mutiny, Manga Messiah. We also reviewed the Manga Bible by Shaku. And I had a fun encounter. Shaku is actually a viewer of Disciple Dojo. I don't know if he's on the stream right now, but he was kind enough to get in touch with me. And um, I reviewed both of these in separate videos. So we're going to give these out. And in this section, this is kind of a, a bunch of them. I'm giving away. I also reviewed the Action Bible and the Action NIV Study Bible. So this was a graphic novel. This was an actual study Bible with elements of the graphic novel included in it. So this is going to be a set. And I also reviewed the Epic Bible. This is a graphic novel. It was originally published in three volumes, I think is the Kingstone Bible. Um, but it is a full uh, graphic novelization of the Bible by different artists who do work for Marvel and DC. Uh, so we're going to give away all of these. So we're going to do this in four. We'll have four winners. Um, the first winner will get Manga Bible. The second winner will get both Manga Mutiny and Manga Messiah. And there are more in this series. These are just the two that someone sent me to review. The next winner after that will get the Epic Bible. And then the last winner of this set will get both of these, the St Action Bible and the Action Study Bible. Check out the reviews of all of these here on the channel. But for these, we're going to say, where am I hear my questions? So my question, and again, we're going to put a minute on the clock. I am going to have you, I want you to put, and this, this will be a little random uh, because there's no right answer. What was your favorite cartoon as a kid? Animated, it can be manga, it can be um, American cartoon, something else. Right now, 60 seconds, put in the chat your favorite cartoon as a kid. I'm going to choose four winners. So let's see. We 60 got 60 second timer is running. All right. And we got a lot. We got Tom and Jerry, Naruto, Beast Wars, Avatar, Thunder the Barbarian. I <laughs> love it. Bugs Bunny. I'm starting to understand why these people are your followers. Yes, these are my people. <laughs> Speed Racer, nice. Felix, ooh, going back. We got One Punch Man. There's some manga. Digimon, Naruto, Tom and Jerry, classic. Rocky and Bullwinkle, classic. All right. Keep them coming, keep them coming. How are we doing on time? 45 seconds. All right. Time for a few more. Fraggle Rock. Wow. <laughs> duck Amuck. I don't know what Duck Amuck is. Four, oh, tails. three, two, one. Time. All right. So I have to wade through these, and almost all of these are great. Uh. <laughs> So I'm going to pick, oh man, this is tough. These are not going to be in order. Okay. For the winner of the manga Bible, I have got to go with, uh, we're going to go with, who said, who said one punch man? Somebody that, said one punch man. That was early on up close to the top. Yep. 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 Hold on. Hold on. Uh, One Punch Man, America. There we go. All right. All right. You are the winner because I know that you are a manga fan and probably a little younger, although I don't want to assume, um, but you're going to win the manga Bible. So make sure you send your email with your information to the email address. Now, Manga Mutiny. Manga Mutiny is going to go to... Uh, E. Rodrig, who said Voltron. That's that's my generation. Uh, e. Rodrig, Voltron. Good choice. Manga Mutiny are coming to you. Did you see it, Greg? I'm looking. <clears throat> yep, got him. There we go. All right. So then the Epic Bible. 
I got to give this one to Michelle Williams, Hong Kong Fooey. Love it. <laughs> Michelle Williams, Hong Kong Fooey, number one super guy. Who didn't love Hong Kong Fooey? Sunday mornings, USA, Cartoon Express. That's a good choice. And we wanted to go a little bit old school with that one. So uh, you see it? Yep, got it. Okay, Michelle Williams, you are the winner of the Epic Bible. And then last, the NIV Action Study Bibles. This is going to go to... Um, oh, wait, somebody asked real quick, JM, can we get your producer's name once more? Does he have a YouTube or social? Yes, this is Gregory Richardson. Bible hacking is his YouTube. Is it Bible hacker or it's Bible hacking, right? Bible hacking. Bible hacking is his YouTube channel and he's awesome. You should definitely follow him and see what all he's doing. Shout Thank out you. to Gregory. FYI, we have a guest waiting in the wings. Oh, as well. this is perfect timing. Perfect timing. Okay. Um, let me pick the last winner and it is going to be uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Hold on, hold on. Um, this one is going to Mo Ortiz. Mo Ortiz. He Man. Masters of the Universe. My man. I got a whole room in there of all my He-Man stuff that I grew up with. Uh, Mo, these are coming your way. I couldn't agree more. That was my favorite cartoon as well. So send your information to Gregory, Bible hacking info, so he can get those to me. And then I can get all these in the mail. Someone says, I'm starting to understand why these people are your followers, AW24. Yeah, you're starting to see it. <laughs> I love it. I love my followers. This is uh, Bible Nerd Central, and we welcome nerds of all kind. Yeah, if I, if I can comment on that real quick, um, JM, um, mm -hmm. I immediately, so when, um, um, when I saw his channel online, I felt the same thing immediately. I was like, oh my God, these are actual people that are in kind of like my frame of mind in terms of, you know, comic book characters and sci-fi. And he's also a Star Wars fan, even though he likes Baby Yoda a little bit too much. Um, but, you know, on and on and on. And I was like, as a Christian, I hadn't seen this a lot in, you know, the the, the in the very conservative areas that I came from. So it, it just really made me feel at home. Like, you know, we're all created in God's image and we, 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 we all might have different expressions of the stuff we like. But on to more important things right now, there's a guest waiting. Uh oh, who do we have? Let's let's bring them up and see. What is happening? What's up, my man? How's it, Michael Halcom, my partner in crime of ten questions. Actually, I'm his partner in crime. I'm the Robin to his Batman on uh, ten questions. What's up, brother? Aloha, man. Aloha. How's it? It. How's it, brother? We've had a we had a couple of people stop in already. You're uh, guest number three. Right on. Um, yeah, we had Jay Sklar and we've had Mark Ward. Um, I think that too. I'm I'm losing track because we've been just giving away a bunch of stuff. So what's like what's going on? Good. How are you, my friend? Yeah, I'm good. I just uh, actually got done recording some podcasts. We've been speaking in Greek for two hours, so we're uh, <laughs> nice. We're getting ready to launch a new episode or new segment for Proof Text, and uh, episodes are all in Greek. We're looking at. Uh, Starting with the book of Jonah, just going verse by verse and uh, looking for the at the Greek it, for the Septuagint of Jonah. Septuagint, yeah. Oh, that's yep. awesome. Yep. Yep. Oh, I so love it. We're reading it in Greek and discussing it in biblical Greek. So it's good stuff, man. But yeah. How would you say, let me let me get you to speak a little Greek here. Since, <laughs> and so um, if you missed the episode, viewers, if you don't know, this is uh, Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom, right? Mm -hmm. That's the, I got the full one right, right? Yeah. I can't remember good. where the letters go. He is a New Testament professor of New Testament, Greek scholar, koina linguist. Um, and he is one of the founders of Glossa House. We've given, we're about to give away a Glossa House resource. It's perfect timing. Appreciate um, the yurt lighting comment. Yeah. He, he has a yurt that he teaches from. He is in it right now. If you were wondering what this structure is, that's his yurt. He lives in Hawaii, which is awesome. Uh, so it's like what? What time is it out there? 1, 2 p.m.? Yeah, it's 3 o'clock, yeah. 3 o'clock, okay. So, okay, somebody said, can y'all debate on how to pronounce Septuagint or Septuagint? <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, so we, you know, in Koine, we don't have a J sound. So Septuagint can't quite be right. The gamma in Greek is more of a G. So I always yes. pronounce it Septuagint. Um, yeah, that's why I say yeah. Septuagint instead of uh, Septuagint. Yeah. Folks that may have not have seen the episode, go back and watch the interview that I did with Michael Coat because it's basically like him correcting my Greek that I've been speaking wrong for 20 years. <laughs> um, we shall call him the Greek geek. I love that. Christopher Hunter said that. Uh, they said, how do you say yurt in Koine Greek? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, probably something like skame, just like tent. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. So how would you, you, you're reading through Jonah. How would you say... Jonah is not the hero in Greek. Who? Um, let's see. I'll just do something a little bit easier. I said Jonah is not the man, um, but uh, something like Jonas Ukestino uh, um, mm -hmm. So let me think. How do we say? Um, How would you say? Like, what's the what's a Greek good guy, protagonist, hero? Because uh, I always when I teach Jonah from Hebrew, I always just say Jonah is the bad guy. It's the only book of the Bible named after the bad guy. Um, uh, it, it might even be Eros. I could be wrong about that. Um, but you could say like Kalos Anthropos or Kalos Aner. Uh, or Jonas Ukesti Kalos Anthropos or Jonas Ukesti O Kalos Aner. You know, Jonas Esti Kakos. Jonas is So many ways. Uh, so many yeah. good ways. Yeah. yeah. You, I, I heard, I got to sit in on your session at SBL uh, this past year and you read, what did you read? In Greek, um, yeah. So I did. Uh, I did a presentation in Greek. What did I present on? I don't know. It remember. was. It was a let. It was. Was it Philemon? Did you read Philemon? Philemon. That's it. I performed Philemon in Greek. That's it. Yep. Yeah, and it was so cool because, like SBL, there's a lot of boring presentations and people just reading their stuff. But you actually did like a drama. Like you, you acted out as if you were reading the letter to Philemon, right. and but you did it all in Koine. And it was that's so right. cool. I remember sitting there thinking, like, that's really, really cool. I don't know how many people in the room were able to follow. Uh, I was not one of them, but I could follow the mannerisms and catch, like, maybe every tenth word. It's and, all right. You, you know, you can even get the you can get the gist of it just by watching the performance, right? Like, yeah, um, yeah. I was able to pick up a lot on the message for sure. Yeah, that was really Fabian. Cool. I see Fabian's asking any tips for learning Greek, specifically Ooh. biblical Greek. Um, Great question. Yeah, check out. I don't want to be self-promoting, but you know, the proof text. Hey, maybe this is the tip right here is get a Glossa house resource and learn biblical Greek. <laughs> yeah. Check out glossahouse.com. I'm getting ready to start teaching a, uh, a yeah. Tell them about the conversational, uh, yeah. coin of class you got going on. Yeah. So I'm getting ready to launch Glossa house you, uh, which is for you. And, uh, one of the very first classes we'll be teaching, I'll be teaching is, conversational koine. So I'll be teaching the class in biblical Greek. You'll learn how to listen to biblical Greek, respond to it, and speak in biblical Greek. Um, so check out glosshouse.com and you'll see it right on the front page there. But yeah, anybody's yeah. welcome to, to join us. No, no prereqs necessary. So if you have zero um, information about Greek or knowledge of Greek, even better. Yeah. Yeah. You can just jump in and you can... Um... You can, you can, it's like a convert. It's like an ESL almost like you're just learning yeah. immersively. Somebody yeah. asked uh, Glossa house, any resources for teaching our children Koina midnight doxology? Yes, yeah. there are. This yeah. is one of them. Um, yeah. I'm going to, we're going to do a giveaway. Do you have any, um, we, you know, we've just been doing random giveaways where people throw out a question and it could be like hard biblical trivia question, or it can be just a, like, I, I just asked people's favorite superhero or I mean their favorite cartoon. Uh, mm -hmm. and then we're just picking random, but I, here's what I want to do. If you don't mind, Michael is help yeah. us give away some resources. Sure. Um, first, second, and third. So we'll have three tiers. The first All one right. is the, your book, the 50 body parts in ancient Greek. This is a picture book guys. It just, it's like you can use this with your kids or yourself. You can learn how to say uh, somebody is bald. This I relate to this picture. Um, you, it's a resource. One of Glossa House's resources that the, the, their first tier, very basic. So this is going to be first prize. Second prize, I have two uh, devotionals. So this would be for people who know a little bit of Greek. 
and you want to keep it sharp. These are both from Zondervan, Devotions on the Greek New Testament. And these are just basically a year's worth. Each one is, I think, 52. Yeah, so this is two years worth. A short passage in Greek and then a reflection on it in English by a different scholar. So you decide uh, which ones you want. And let's see what we have up here. And then the third one is going to be the I've reviewed when I did the Septuagint in our last <laughs> video. Uh, I reviewed the different ones and I had a copy of Brenton's, which is the older one that includes uh, sweets, Septuagint text along with it. So the Greek on mm. one side, the nice. English on the other. We're going to give this away as well. Um, now that I have a couple of other Septuagints, this one I don't use as much. So these are our three prizes. So what, how should we do this, Michael? Do you have any things that we can ask? Wow. Um, you mean some some Bible questions or what? It, uh, it can be anything. It can be something having to do with Greek. It can be something having to do with the languages in general. It can just be a random question. It yeah. So what language would you like to speak? Here, here's a question. Um, okay. Who was uh, one of the key figures, if not the key figure, responsible for Hellenization around 300 BCE? Oh, good question. Okay. Who was the figure, first person to answer? We're going to choose them in order three. Who was responsible for most of the world eventually speaking Greek by the first yeah. century? Boom. So, who do we looks have? Looks like Brian Park got it, right? Is that right? He looked like he was the first one. All right. You help me keep track, and Gregory can help because my doesn't refresh <laughs> it. Okay. I have – wait, who did you have? I have – uh, uh. Is it Alexander the Great? It yes, is Alexander the Great. Okay, I'll find I'll find the first one. The first one was Brian Park. Yep. All right, so Brian Park, you're gonna win 50 body parts in ancient Greek, the picture book. Send your information to the email uh, info at biblehacking.com and we are biblehacking.org. There's yet another surprise guest. Oh, my gosh. We have so many awesome week. people here in the dojo. I love it. Yeah. So this is the first one. Uh, the second one, who is next? Who said Alexander the Great next? Where'd you go, Gregory? You come in, you help, you leave. I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> who, is, who is the second person? Uh, Matthew McKnight. All right. Matthew McKnight. These are coming your way if you send your email address, uh, your shipping info. And then who was the third person that answered correctly? Oops, my bad. It should be there now. There you go. A name that I'm not going to try to pronounce, but send your shipping info. And I've received lots of shipping info, so thank you for everyone that sent This it. one, Janssen, Bernie, Ryan, Samatupong. All right. Nice. All right. I, so I say, uh, real quick before I... Somebody, somebody was like, Ugh, he just said BCE. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that might be interesting to just say a word about, and then I'll, I'll move out so your next guest can. Go uh, for it. Explain, your, explain yourself. Yeah, so uh, that, that's not a, uh, I know that that could reek of sort of a progressivism or liberalism, but, you know, in, um, in academic circles, uh, you use BCE, it just means before the common era. And CE just means the common era. That's no discredit to, to Christ or anything like that. Uh, it's just what uh, more scientific terminology. Plus, I'll say uh, we, we've the whole BC AD thing has kind of thrown, uh, it's caused some chronological problems for um, understanding uh, events that actually happened during biblical times, right? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> BC and AD aren't correct. I mean, That's like right. the, the date is wrong. And, right. and so, exactly. yeah. Yeah. So one of the reasons I tend to use BCE is because I want to be chronologically correct when I'm speaking about events that happened, uh, biblical events that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And same thing with CE. We've used AD for like after death and BC before Christ. But right. Christ wasn't there was no year zero. Right. First of all. Mm -hmm. Uh, BCE, the years count backwards, and uh, AD or you know CE, they count forward. And so you start with the year one, 
on the AD side or the CE side and a year one on the BC or BCE side. That goes backwards. This goes forward. So there's no year zero. So yeah. to do correct biblical chronology, it's actually more precise to use BCE and does the greater does a greater justice to scripture than BC and AD do. So yeah, because otherwise you had the scenarios where Jesus was actually probably born what around between like six and somewhere That's right. around six, six BC. BC. Yeah. So yeah. you'd have like Jesus living for a couple of years before Christ. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, people yeah. get riled up about it and I get it. Yeah. They think it's like a liberal agenda. They think it's, right. you know, denigrating scripture. Ah. I get it's it. But the it opposite. It's the opposite. Yeah. It's, yeah there, it's, there's good reasons that you can use it. I don't make a big deal if people use it. I think either works. Um, yep. So I encourage people to, yeah, give a little, give a little grace on that regard and don't and assume. Yeah, they're, they're talking about in the chat here, Anno Domini. It's Latin, by the way. It means yeah. year of our Lord. And mm -hmm. uh, if you do AD 1, that's not the year Christ was born. He was born right, in 6 right. BC, right? <laughs> so you can't say AD 1 is the year of Christ or you're chronologically off. Uh, and you start yeah. causing all sorts of chronology problems. So, <laughs> well, anyways. it is it's great having you in the dojo, um, yeah. being, being the Greek sensei. And that's 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 what we love about you, folks. Follow uh, Glossa House's YouTube. What's what's your YouTube handle? Yeah. At Glossa House. At yep. Glossa House. So be sure to check out at Glossa House. They have a ton of great resources, print resources and digital. And then check out Glossa House U. The classes that they're going to be offering. Um, Michael's teaching one. Fred Long's teaching one. Like there's there's good stuff going on. So. Be sure to check it out. Michael, thank you so much for stopping by, brother. It's great yeah. to see you. Yeah, man. Good to see you, JM. Congrats on all the success. And uh, thank thanks, you, everybody, for letting me drop in, even if I stirred the pot a little bit. Yes. <laughs> well, that's what we count on you for. Yeah. All right, JM. We'll see you, brother. Take care. <laughs> um, just a reminder, folks, if you do win any of the prizes and you are international, we can't pay for the shipping. So you got to pay for the shipping international. If you win in domestic U S we got you shipped all day long, but just with the cost for international shipping, it's just a lot. And, uh, we're giving away a lot of resources. We have more to give away, but we need to do a big one. Um, what are we looking at Gregory? Should we do a guest first or should we do I would definitely say guest first? This guest has been very patiently sitting oh. in the corner there. So Bring let's, get, let's, let's see who we have. Him. What is up? Guys, this is Dr. Matthew Halstead. How's it going, man? I'm doing great. So I'm like, I'm actually uh, in the in the parking lot at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> love it. Ate with my my. Son. As a nerd, I love that you're in the parking lot at Costco on a phone, <laughs> jumping on a live stream. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you're Can speaking I Gregory's love language. <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to go shop while I was talking to you guys, but my wife's like, yeah, it might, it might not work like that. Just stay in the park. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, nice to see you guys. This is the first yeah. live stream I've done in a Costco parking lot. So, I don't think anybody's done a biblical scholar interview in a Costco parking lot ever, so we're breaking new ground here on this live stream. That's right. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, if you don't know, um, Matthew had a book come out recently, and it was quite a good book. How's that doing? How's how are how's the sales going? Yeah, it seems great. I mean, I've got a lot of good responses, and people um, have enjoyed it. People I've talked to. I did an interview today with um, a podcast, and they mm -hmm. they really enjoyed. Had some great things to say. So it was always super encouraging because I, I joke as like you know when you write a book, you don't you don't put ink to paper and send it out. What you do is you put a little bit of your soul down and offer that up to people. Right. And so it's always encouraging to hear how the book. Uh, is helping people. That's my goal is that it would help people and encourage people. Yeah. And you put your soul out there for people to tear apart. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I love it. Well, people are excited. Cindy Anderson says, yay, Matt, how said uh, Mike Heiser turned me on to your work. Just read end times. It is wonderful. Then uh, said, excellent biblical scholar. Uh, somebody said, I'm dreading the moment I have to run to Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you have to skip Bible study for any reason, this is a good enough one. Um, like the Naked Bible podcast you did as well. Uh, yeah, you got some fans in here. This is great. Um, Thank you so much, guys. That's, that means a lot. Thank you so much for the encouragement. 
Yeah. So you you uh, want to you do three get two guests at one time? I think these two guests are very compatible with each other content wise. I think I think you should go ahead and drop two guests at one time. Hey, you're running the you're running the thing. So if you got if you want to bring in somebody, let's do it. <laughs> We're gonna. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing great. Guys, we are. This is peak Bible nerdiness <laughs> right here. We got New Testament, we got Old Testament, we got Bible hacking. Carmen Imes, our dear friend and the Disciple Dojo Black Belt guest. <laughs> so good to see you. Good to see you too. How's it going? Ah, oh, great. I assume you guys know each other. I don't think we've ever met. Have we, Matthew? Uh, I think we met at SBL. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a brief. Like in the book yeah. tables or something. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. Look at this. Disciple Dojo bringing people together. <laughs> <laughs> it would have come earlier, but I was in class and then I had office hours and now I'm free. So, so a chat just said, we need Matt and Carmen to write a book <laughs> on Unseen Realm 2. <laughs> uh, Edgar Gonzalez says, this is a scholar's all-star game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> I can't say much about this, but there is a project in the works, but it's it's top secret. Can't say it, not just teaser, me, not just me and Carmen. There's others, but um, yeah, mm. guys, sorry. It is it is in the works. <laughs> oh, Dojo viewers, you're you're getting a little tease, a little glimpse of some really cool stuff. Um, we have been doing uh, we've been doing a bunch of giveaways and and giving out resources. Matthew, were you? You had mentioned, did you mention, uh, I was trying to grab my copy of your book. Uh, did you have an idea of what you wanted to do? Oh, it's like a giveaway? Yeah. Yeah, whatever you think, man, however you want to do it. Well, so we've, we've just have been having people on and we've had some, like Jay Sklar was on and he asked like a pretty hard Bible trivia, like they had to know chapter and verse. Um, yeah. And then we've had others like I just gave away a bunch of like comic book Bibles and I just asked people's favorite cartoons. Uh, so that's just kind of how we're doing it is like we throw out a question or something and then we look at the chat and see like who. So it could be yep. anything, anything having to do with your work or end times or totally unrelated uh, favorite <laughs> item at Costco that they would like to see you buy. And we just <laughs> that looks like Costco. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. So here's the question. Uh, I guess the, the winner gets the book or however you want to do it. I guess so. Um, how many times, yeah. how many times is the word antichrist in revelation? There you go. Great. Okay. 60 seconds on the clock. Answer. How many times does the word antichrist appear in the book of revelation? And the winner is going to receive a copy of, of Matt's book, The End of the World as You Know It. <laughs> and it really says 666. <laughs> <laughs> That's an honorary mention worthy guess. Uh, Greg, are you able to see who said the correct answer first? First, you have to assume I know the correct answer. Okay, we that's true. Not. I don't take it for granted. Matthew, what is the correct answer? I know it. What is it? zero? The word antichrist yeah. is not in the book of Revelation. Uh, who I had the first it's correct? Looking answer? like David Lopez said that first. He is was that, the first one to answer. Is that the right one? I can't. My feed is just going too fast. So it's going I'm, crazy. <laughs> I'm relying on Gregory. Um, yeah, I'm scanning it right now. I can find it. Hold on. I just want to. See. Yep, David Lopez was absolutely the first. Great awesome. guy to here. Congratulations, right. David. Hope you enjoy the book. We'll get that sent to you. Nice. David Lopez. I, I, I just got to throw out there. Um, the book is amazing. I just got it myself. I was actually talking to Dr. Halstead about it. Um, mm -hmm. It is, in my opinion, a phenomenal book for a small group study. It is yes. easy to digest, short chapters. Like it is a great book to like just dive in deeper with the people in your church or your small group or whatever that are hungry to really get a uh, I don't want to say more accurate, that sounds a little mean, but to just have a really scholarly approach to Revelation that's oftentimes, you know, not yeah. the most. It gets over sensationalized. This right. is a this is a scholarly, thoughtful, 
biblically faithful look at, and I said in our, if you, if viewers are watching, if you didn't see the interview that Matthew and I did together, we talked about the book and I said, I don't have, I don't have to write a book on eschatology anymore because it's, this is it. This is the one I would have written. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm excited. I'm glad that it's doing well. I love seeing people uh, getting it, reading it and, and really taking it to heart. Um, congratulations, man. Well, cool. hey, thank you so much. I, I so appreciate that. Super encouraging to me. Uh, this is my second book, so I'm a novice. I'm still learning how to do all this stuff. So it, it is very encouraging to me. And I, I pray that it helps people and encourages people in their faith and in their walk with Jesus. And um, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. You're very kind to, to share share the book. There's a yeah. couple people asking in the chat for the name of the book again. Mm -hmm. It is The End of the World as You Know It, right? The End of the World as yeah. You Know It what the Bible really says about the end times and why it's good news. <laughs> Love it. There's, I got to pull this quote out. Midnight Doxology says, as a Dispy complementarian Calvinist, I feel oddly at home with y'all still. <laughs> I love that. That makes me so happy. God is big enough for all the weirdos. <laughs> exactly. Family discussions get heated, but they're the most enjoyable. And uh, my Dispy complementarian Calvinist friends, I still consider y'all family. So Midnight Doxology podcast, we're glad to have you. <laughs> well, hey, guys, I, I have to run. I'm gonna you got to get some shopping done. Kiddos in the store. And so it's such a such a pleasure to hang out with you guys. And uh, thanks for having me. Carmen, nice to see you. And yep. uh, nice hope, to see you too, Matt. Absolutely. See you guys. Take care. Thank you. Take Bye. care, brother. <laughs> Carmen Imes, JM, what are you up to? to you. you just, just finished teaching. What I class did. were you teaching? Theology of Exodus. How's that going? It's fun. It's a. It's my first grad class at mm -hmm. Talbot. Mm -hmm. I, I normally teach undergrads, and it has eight students online and eight students in person, and it's like a hybrid blended thing in this really cool classroom where I can see everybody at uh -huh. the back of the classroom on this big screen. And there's a camera that tracks me as I walk around. Cool. And they have another camera where they can see the other students. And it's working really well. That's so awesome. It's fun. Oh, it's like, man, imagine it's, it's like we're in the future. Like this is like Jetson stuff when we were growing <laughs> I up. I know it is. Being able to, I mean, even what we're doing right now is. I know. As it's kids, nuts. we were like, man, that's going to be the future. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah. We got so um, comments in the chat. Torah Tuesday is awesome. I we're agree. back to uh, we're back to Exodus tomorrow on Torah Tuesday because of course it was Monday. So new episode drops at midnight, and I did a four week hiatus to to show where I went in Egypt to mm -hmm. give glimpses of my study tour to Egypt. But I'm back to Exodus 14. Yeah, at midnight tonight. Well, um, how off? How much? Uh, let's see. Midnight Doxology said they got to run. Um, Congratulate Midnight Doxology. Have a great time. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, you're awesome. So thank you so much. Uh, Carmen, how, I know we don't have a ton of time and we've still got giveaways to get through. Um, nice. How much time do we have with you? Just a, a few minutes. I need to go okay. home to dinner in a few minutes. Dinner? Who needs that? Come on. <laughs> Food is I mean, to do the will of like, me. Where's mom? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, okay. Tell, I won't tell Danny. We won't keep you long. So here's what I would like to do. I have a, some stuff to give away mm -hmm. and I've got a, where did I put my stack? Uh, so I have some Torah related resources that I want right. to give away. Sweet. And you would be the perfect person to help me do that. And here's what Love I want it. to do. I want this one to be, let the folks, um, Maybe let's have, uh, we'll do three. I know it. I know it. Okay. If we can get Carmen's YouTube channel to 9,000 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you have not already subscribed <laughs> to uh, Carmen's YouTube, you absolutely should be. Like she is the, re <laughs> you were the reason that Disciple Dojo got its first bump and Torah Tuesday was Mm, and I was like, man, I'm going to get there one day. You left me way in the dust now. <laughs> well, you left me when you went to Egypt and got to see all the cool stuff. And I was sitting here making YouTube videos. So I think it evens out a little. <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. That's I, I want to hear when when we have time to actually sit and chat. I definitely want to hear more about Egypt. I have so many questions. Mm -hmm. 
but what we want you to do, so uh, Greg, just put up your YouTube channel, folks, go there and subscribe if you haven't already. I have three prizes or three giveaways that we want to give. And, and I think it would be cool if we had three people um, ask you a question, whatever they've wanted to ask. And, and you don't, you can go in depth or, or you can just answer cursory. They can ask you your favorite color. They can ask you something about the Bible. Just you get a chance to ask Dr. Carmen Imes any question. And then Carmen will let you scan the chat. And when you pull out, a, if you see a question you want to answer, and then for each one you answer, we'll give away one resource that has to do with the Torah. All so, right. There's a question already. Yep. That's great. There's a question from Velvet Video. Okay. Is there, is there any archaeological evidence for Exodus? All right. Velvet Video. And, and Gregory, hope you're keeping track. Um, Velvet Video. Found it. Go ahead, Carmen. And, and Velvet Video is going to win, just so you know, before Carmen answers, uh, a commentary on Exodus by J.A. Metyer in the Message the Bible Speaks Today series. We just did a recent review of this series, and um, this was one of the ones that I recommended for interested readers. So this is going to go to Velvet Video in honor of her question that she just asked. And how would you answer that question? Pardon? All right. So I would say what we would, of course, love to find is a tent peg that says belonging to Moses on it, or like a tablet that says, this is the route that the Israelites took on their way to Mount Sinai, or like a sign at Mount Sinai saying Moses was here or something like that. That's the kind of evidence we would love to find. And no, we don't have any evidence like that for the Exodus. But we don't have much evidence of ancient events like that. So that's not usually how archaeology works. Um, usually how it works is it gives us an idea of what's plausible during certain time periods. What was what was life like? What, were, what was daily life like? What were buildings like? Um, what were the concerns people had? Where were the bodies of water? Where were the buildings? And, and in, in terms of the supposed uh, time period of the Exodus, we have all kinds of things that fit really well. And I saw that on my trip to Egypt, so many things, so much iconography in Egypt that is similar to what the Bible describes, uh, imagery in the tabernacle, that sort of thing that gives me a greater and greater confidence that what we're reading in the book of Exodus is stuff that actually happened. Nice. Great answer. All right, we got two more questions for you to pick out. And again, all right, Colton Honeycutt asks, What is the next book in the series of Why Blank Still Matters? <laughs> <laughs> so and for there viewers, is... hold on, let me let me move Skeletor here. here for go. viewers that don't know, Carmen's <laughs> two books, Bearing God's Name, Why Sinai Still Matters, and Being God's Image, Why Creation Still Matters. What's next on yes. the list? That's a great question. Next, the next book is Becoming God's Family, Why the Church Still Matters. Ooh. You can pray for me because it's time for me to dive in and start working on it. I've been caught up in revising my Exodus commentary with all the stuff I learned in Egypt. So it's a, it's been a little bit uh, delayed from when I meant to start writing, but it's been percolating in my heart and mind. That's a great little uh, uh, um, uh, teaser, coming attraction, preview of coming attractions here yes. on the stream. So uh, Colton, was that right? Who was it? Colton Honeycutt? Yes, it was Colton yeah. Honeycutt. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Colton, we're going to send you yeah, the uh, Preaching the Word commentary on Deuteronomy. This is by Ejit Fernando. This He is a Christian from Sri Lanka. He's the head of Youth for Christ Sri Lanka. He's a, he's a wonderful man. I've met him before over in the Holy Land. Great guy. Um, this is a kind of a pastoral walkthrough of Deuteronomy. And we're going to send this your way if you send the email to Gregory so he can get your shipping information. Okay. And then Carmen, did you pick one last question before yeah. you go? Yeah. Okay. So Mama A asks, what is the most significant Bible section regarding women in ministry? Since you and I had a nice long chat about that. We did. That's a good one to take. Great uh, question. I think the most significant neglected biblical passages on women in ministry are the times when Paul lists the gifts of the Spirit in the New Testament. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, and he, when Paul lists the gifts of the spirit, he never designates them just for men. And so he gives us all kinds of uh, different gifts, speaking, teaching, helping, uh, serving, administering, leading. And he doesn't limit any of them just to men. So I think that's a really neglected dimension of this whole conversation about what can women do. We gravitate towards a couple of verses in Paul where Paul seems to be saying no mm -hmm. uh, to women to do certain things. And we forget, oh, but look, the spirit has gifted women to do things. And therefore God is calling them to use these gifts to serve the body of Christ. Mm. Great. I love it. That's a great answer. And well, anyone then the who hasn't heard it can go check out our two hour and 15 minute long conversation on this topic. <laughs> Yes, Carmen and I had a wonderful discussion uh, about the issue of what women can and can't do according to scripture and teaching. And, and um, it's been a really good, that's a great episode. And, and I'm so glad that you came on the channel to do it. Oh, I'm so glad it. you agreed. Uh, yeah, it was, it was great to be able to do it long form. Yeah, uh, it so. was. It was. Well, so for this one, the last giveaway, and these are cool. These are kind of vintage. I came across these in a used bookstore. We're going to give away one of these. Uh, I think it's an old time life book on the Israelites. And it's oh, nice. really cool. It's got like uh, photos and images and all this stuff about life in ancient Israel. And nice. then another vintage Atlas of the Bible that I came across. And it same thing. It's got a lot of the stuff. Just it's just a cool Bible atlas. These are both. I came across these in a used bookstore one time. I was like, man, these are just illustrated beautifully, and they're kind of from that. I think they're I don't know, sixties or seventies, but but they're just really cool. And so, in honor of Carmen and Torah Tuesday and her having trekked through the Sinai recently, <laughs> uh, we're gonna I send wish, these. I wish I had trekked through the Sinai. They didn't let me go to Sinai because oh, there was a level situation, yeah, travel advisory, but. Yes. You had to settle for seeing the pyramids. Darn. I settled for the pyramids. Yep. <laughs> lots of tombs, lots of museums. Well, we're going to, who was the last question? Who did you pick? I, I didn't uh, it see was it. Mama A. Mama A. So Mama A, if you want these sent your way, send the email to Gregory and he will get them to you. Carmen, Yay. so good to see you. Thanks for good stopping to see you by. Too. Yeah. yeah this, this was a really fun idea. And when you hit 20,000, you can have me on. <laughs> Yes. We'll, uh, we'll Congratulations on two. having an awesome channel. I've, I've well, the work you're doing. you were our first scholar that ever came on. You've been a long time. Carmen and I have been personal friends for, a, for I don't know, a long time, over a decade. <laughs> but she was she and Richard Middleton both were very instrumental in helping people know about Disciple Dojo early on. And so I really do sincerely want to thank you for that. And every follower of Disciple Dojo should be following Carmen's channel mm -hmm. if you're not already. So go subscribe. Uh, all 20,000 of you. Math. I, think, I think we probably met in 2006 or seven. That probably sounds seven, about right. Yeah, that's yeah. How, it was about the time Way I was either just finishing or had just finished seminary. Yep. And you were getting just there. Finished and I was just starting. You led the way. Yeah. You found Jan Block for me as a supervisor. I scouted him. You know, I was your scout. I went and scouted out. You recruited out. me to adult Sunday school, which was a blast. <laughs> and then you yeah. taught me all about eschatology and changed my life. Wow. Changed how I read Revelation. I'm just honored that I made a footnote in uh, your latest <laughs> book. So that makes me you happy. You did get a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Give cool. my love to uh, Danny. And it's so good to see you, Carmen. Thank you so much for stopping by. Good to see you too. Take, Take care. care. All right, folks, we are, we are, oh, we're just over halfway. We got to, Gregory, we got to make up and give away one of these big bakers because um, we've had some high power guests on here, but so we've fallen a little bit behind. Um, somebody said, post all channels in the description for when you post the video. Oh yeah. We'll edit the video description to make sure that everybody gets their shout outs. So Gregory, can we do um, can we do a, a, a randomized giveaway for absolutely? So this is going to be for the first Baker Illustrated Study Bible. Um, you tell me what we're doing, Gregory. You you tell me how to do it. I'm clearing it out right now. Okay. Everyone, put a number between 
I'm going to do 1266. As a matter of fact, I'll do it a different way. I'm going to take all of the users that are in the chat right now, and we have a guest that's pending to come in, um, but we'll, we'll, fit, we'll do the giveaway first. Yep. I'm going to take the names of all the users that are active in the chat right now. So for the next 60 seconds, timer starts right now, put the number one in the chat. Everyone right. that puts the number one in the chat in the next 60 seconds is going to get entered into the, um, whatchamacallit, the, the giveaway. giveaway for the Baker Illustrate. Okay, and so if you're on the chat. Randomized um, giveaway. Yep. So go ahead, everybody that wants to enter, put one. That's how we know who to grab. Uh, I see Scott Harris typed out one. That still counts. That's fine. That counts. <laughs> we'll take it. Perfect. What's up, Scott? Good to see you. So yeah, just put one. Seconds. Keep going, guys. Keep entering. Keep entering. Just put number one. Just put number one. That's all. This is just your. This is I your like that some people are putting four and six. Guys, follow <laughs> directions. Put one. <laughs> just enter it once. Just enter it one time. Mama Age is back. Six, seven, eight, nine, one minute. Boom. Okay, stop. All right. There you go. And hold on. That's now I'm going to grab all of those names. All right. So this is the first. We're going to do this again. We've got two more of these to do before we end the stream. So if you miss that first 60 seconds, you haven't missed, but you have to be paying attention. You have to be on the spot. And I'm doing the the roll the roll of thingy thing of a jigabob right now. Hold on. Is there a way to put that on the screen or? No, I tried. There is okay, no way no because it's not a video. I can't put it up. I I was trying to do that. That would have been awesome. No worries. No worries. All right. And so the first winner is. Hold on. Uh, so so the, the first winner has been selected already. I'm just trying to find your your number. So that I can put you up, Troy Cox. Troy, you winner. Troy Cox. Troy Cox, you won the first copy that we've given away of the Baker Illustrated Study Bible, leather-bound edition. Unavailable in stores, at least that I know of. Hard to find online. This is headed your way if you email Gregory with your shipping information. All right. Send it to info at biblehacking.org and we will get this shipped out to you. All right. We ready for whoever we have next, Greg? We are. Are you ready? Who is jumping on? So let's do this in the three-way right here. There so Lois, I don't know if you can hear us. Can you hear us, Lois? Speak. Lois might be having a technical difficulty, so I'm going to technical. pause Lois for a hot second, but she is in the in the wings. We'll get her fixed. No worries. No worries. We're going to give away. We're going to keep doing another giveaway while we're waiting to get that set up. Um, we are coming on. Let's see. All right. So we're going to do a couple of, we're going to do one really nerdy Bible giveaway, and then we're going to do some basics. So we, we've got a number of basic study Bibles that we've reviewed here on the channel. And wait, I'm missing one. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. All right. So we've got five study Bibles. All these have been reviewed before on the channel. Um, that we're going to use as I'm going to pick the questions. We're going to do just like what you did for Carmen. Now we're going to have Q and a for me where you get to ask me any question and I'm going to pick ones and I'm going to answer and I will give away. We have the NIV basic study Bible. And this is the one that I actually used contact paper to cover. If you watch the video on how I buy paperbacks and then just use contact paper to cover them and save a lot of money and still have a good rugged Bible. So this one is going to be given away. We're going to be giving away the New American Standard, the Light for Life Bible I've reviewed on the channel. We're going to be giving away the Starting Point Study Bible. This was actually my friend Joanne was the guest host way back, and she actually interviewed me about this study Bible. We're going to be giving away the Quest Study Bible. 
And um, there's a newer version of this, but this is the one that we reviewed on the channel. And then lastly, and this one's old school, we're going to give away the original apologetics study Bible. This is the Holman Christian Standard translation, not the CSB, but the Holman. So before the CSB was the HCSB. And this is a study Bible for people with apologetics focus or questions having to do with apologetics. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to pick five some questions. Very interesting questions in the lurk. Yeah, we're getting some good ones. Um, so I'm going to pick five and then we're going to go from there. Um, so the first one, and I've got to scan down. Let's see. Um, all right. First one is, oh, somebody asked a great question. Um, oh, I keep losing it. I keep losing it. I keep losing it. Who is it? I, it keeps <laughs> Emily Taylor. Emily Taylor asks, how did the grown-ups table come about? And I want to give a shout out to the grown-ups table. Emily Taylor, great question. What is the grown-ups table? Guys, one of the ministries Disciple Dojo does is a worldwide, but particularly all over the country and in Canada, uh, ministry for single adults, for unmarried Christians. We have a group. We started it on Facebook. I started it after Thanksgiving, two Thanksgivings ago. We just had our one year anniversary. And it was started because as like, I'm not married. I mean, you can see I have no wedding ring. As an unmarried Christian, it is hard to make friends. After your 20s, when you get booted out of the college and career ministries at churches, there's nothing for you. If you're not married, if you don't have kids, good luck finding connection with people after that college and career stage. So for me, somebody in my 40s looking for friends and connection and other single adults, people to hang out with and just to do fun stuff with, there was nothing. So I started a group on Facebook. I was part of another singles group. And that singles group said, hey, from now on, we're only going to allow people under 40 to enter because they were trying to skew younger and market to different Christian dating events and Christian mingle events. And, and there were dating coaches out there and other singles groups focused on like connecting people, but they were all businesses and they were all like groups to get you to be part of this business venture to it just, it was, and I was like, I just want to meet other single Christians and hang out and do fun stuff. So I started the group the day after Thanksgiving. I said, I sat down I said, you know what? Thanksgiving, a lot of times if you're single, if you if you're not married and you go to family gatherings, a lot of times you get stuck at the kids table because, you know, the grown ups table is where the adults with families go. And then there's the kids table and then there's the single people that kind of get stuck there. So I said, we need to make a table for all of the unmarried Christian adults out there. So we started the grown ups table as a Facebook group within the first year. We were at about 15, 1600 members. We've done uh, ski trips. We did a ski retreat together. We've done a summer beach retreat last August um, where we just studied, taught through. I taught through the book of Ecclesiastes and we just studied scripture together at the beach down in Georgia on the coast. It was amazing. And the community, we've, we've been doing get togethers here in Charlotte, but other cities where there are grown up stable members, they've been getting together and doing stuff too. So we've had grown ups events in South Carolina, Ohio. Um, up in New England. We've had some out in Texas. It is a place for unmarried Christians to connect with other unmarried Christians and to just see what God does. So if you're watching this, if you are not married and you're a follower of Jesus and you just want to connect, go to facebook.com groups slash groups slash grownups table, all one word, grownups table. There's three questions you have to answer to make sure you're not a spam bot. There's the rules you have to agree to. And, and I'm the admin. So the rules, I'm pretty strict. You know, we don't allow drive-by inspirational posts. We don't allow, hey, I saw this. What do you think? And people just sharing random stuff. It is for discussion. All of the posts have to be geared towards connecting people, making, you know, asking discussion questions, events that we do together. Um it's just, it's awesome. we got a team of moderators that do an amazing job. Shout out to our moderators. So check it out. Grown Ups Table. 
Emily Taylor, thank you so much for asking. And I am going to send you, Emily, a copy of the Apologetics Study Bible as a thank you for that question. So, Emily, send your information to Gregory. He'll get this to you. And I want to keep moving and look at some other of these questions. Um, all right. We got a few. Let's see. Our guest, um, the, the, the upcoming guest is ready whenever you're ready for the guest as well, JM. Okay. All right. Let, let's get through. Let me do... Let me do one more of these and then we'll have our guest in and then I'll do the rest of them. Uh, Kelly Lewis asks, what is your favorite book of the Bible? Kelly Lewis, what is your favorite book of the Bible? Um, Kelly Lewis, my favorite book of the Bible is Revelation. I love Revelation. I think it's, it's my favorite book to teach. It's my favorite book to just to read and think about the imagery. It's nothing like what it's presented as in popular culture. It's the most misunderstood book in the Bible. So Revelation is definitely my favorite book. Shout out though, I, I have one that's drastically risen over the past two years. And I don't know if it's in second place to Revelation. There might be a couple others that would be somewhere in there, but it is in the top you know, near the top of the list. And that's Ecclesiastes. I have done a deep dive for the past two years on Ecclesiastes, translated the whole book and have been working through it, have been teaching it, uh, just trying to understand it. it is the heart. I think it's harder than revelation to understand, but it's powerful and it's profound. And it is so crucial that it's in our Bible. And it's a shame that more people don't know what to do with it. Uh, so Disciple Dojo is going to try, hopefully, in the near future to fix that and get some resources out there. So Revelation number one, honorable mention, Ecclesiastes. And I am, who did I, who, I, I just lost. <laughs> who just Kelly asked? Lewis was the person that asked that. Kelly question. Lewis, Kelly Lewis, I'm going to send you the starting point study Bible as a thank you for that question. Um, email Gregory your information so we can get it to him. All right, Gregory, let's get our next guest in here. Before we do that, what was the giveaway for the person, Emily Taylor, immediately before? The this? Apologetics Study Bible. Gotcha. Thank you. Yes. And then I'm going to still keep scanning the questions because I have three more questions to pick. But our guests, we want to make sure. There she is. Lois. How are you? I can't hear you. We got to get your audio. Audio settings. Can't hear yet. Gregory can help us figure that out. <clears throat> audio is always the hardest thing. Getting audio to work on any stream or podcast is always tricky. Uh, <laughs> what to do? I, I empathize with you, Lois. When I have audio issues as well, it drives me crazy. <laughs> Gregory, can you keep fiddling with that and we uh, do one more giveaway? <clears throat> yeah. Guys, this is why we have uh, I have a producer helping me because I would be totally lost trying to do this all. <laughs> so... All right. While Gregory's helping us figure it out, those of you that have joined us, um, this is we're in the second hour. We're coming up on the end of the second hour of this live stream. We are doing a giveaway. We're celebrating the fact that we hit 20,000 subscribers. Um, we're actually, I think, at around 22,000 as of today. And this is just a chance. I'm doing some Q&A. We're having guests pop in that we have had on before on certain episodes. And we're just we're just giving stuff away as a thank you to the viewers. Gregory from Bible Hacking is doing a great job helping us uh, plug in all the wires and cross the streams and all the other stuff, tech stuff that would make my eyes cross. And so while he's doing that, uh, we're working on getting our guest Lois Verberg in here. But until then, I'm going to continue giving away some of these Bibles that we've reviewed over the past year or two. So I'm choosing questions that people are leaving in the chat and I'm picking the, 
the ones that I think are the best. Um, okay. Abide 35. Abide 35 asks, what is the first book, first Bible book a new believer should read? Abide 35. What is the first Bible book a new believer should read? I There are different answers to that question, and they're all subjective. Some people would say the Gospel of John. I don't think that's a wrong answer. I think of the Gospels, that's probably the one that is the most uh, broad in terms of introducing who Jesus is. But I typically say you don't start watching a movie or watching a play in the fourth or the fifth act. And I think that any all of the Gospels, all of the New Testament are the culmination of the Old Testament. So I honestly think you should start where the Bible starts. I think you should start in Genesis. Now, I don't think you should do the read through a Bible in a year. And I don't necessarily think you should read through the books in the order that they are in the Bible. I think that you should get a big picture overview of the story of, of the Bible, of Israel. And then when you read the New Testament, you will see how Jesus is completing and fulfilling that story. And so one of the things that we do here on the channel, we have a course called Bible for the Rest of Us, and we go through in the session dealing with the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, we lay out the story of Israel. And there's a reading list that we have in the workbook. You, you go to discipledojo.org slash Bible. There's a download the PDF, a workbook you follow along, and it has a reading list of all of the narrative story of the Old Testament. And we have it laid out. You've seen me drinking out of my mug in, our, well, I'm, I'm drinking out of this one, but we have uh, our Old Testament timeline mug that's available in our Disciple Dojo store. This is that story. So if you know this story, then when you turn the page to the New Testament, you see how Jesus draws <coughs> that story together in himself. I think, I think that's the way to do it. Uh, so that's what I would recommend. And for asking that, I am going to send you the Light for Life Study Bible, the New American Standard Light for Life Study Bible. So uh, who is that? Abide 35. So Abide 35, send your email to Gregory and we will get that shipped to you. All right. Um, somebody asked, there are so many good questions. Can you have a YouTube session on answering some of these questions? Yes. This is the first live stream that we've ever done. We will do more of these. I can't say yet when or how frequently we're working out the kinks, as you can see but we will be doing more of these and we will do more live Q and a Gregory. How are we with, did we get Lois figured out? You're going to, I think we did. We're going to give it a shot right now. Let's are you ready? It. Let's see it. Can we hear you now, Lois? Can you hear us? Oh, she can hear us, but we can't hear her. Still no audio. How good are you in sign language? Lois? <laughs> <laughs> oh, such a bummer. I wonder why that is. <laughs> well, we don't want people to have to lip read for Lois. Um, what should we do, Gregory? How should we figure this out? Well, it, it, that's not going to be fixable in the course yeah. of a live stream. So we will have to go to plan B. Thank you for coming, Lois. Um, we appreciate you. You will be Jam's special guest. Look at me calling shots. Um, yeah, no, that's what a producer does. That's what a producer <laughs> does. Yeah, there's something going on with the, the audio. Audio is a nightmare for uh streams and recording and yeah up here guys lois to verberg she was ready to come on and be a guest and because of technical difficulties we're having a problem but lois was the last guest we interviewed here on the channel if you did not see the episode where she and i she is the uh runs our rabbi jesus.com and she is just a wealth of information on the jewish background and particularly the rabbinic background of Jesus and of the New Testament. So go check out Lois's work. Um, somebody, Ed Bertoni says, I bought her book so good. Yes, she has a number of books in the Rabbi Jesus series. We talked about those in that episode. We love Lois here. Lois is such a sweetheart and super knowledgeable. Uh, we just had such a fun discussion. So go watch that discussion. It was great. It was really fun. 
Um, yeah, currently reading, sitting at the feet of Rabbi Jesus and loving it. Thank you, Lois. R. McCaslin. Yes, absolutely. Read, check that book out. That would be one you could start with, sitting at the feet of Rabbi Jesus, uh, walking in the dust of Rabbi Jesus, and reading the Bible with Rabbi Jesus are the three that we reviewed here on the channel. Love, love, love Lois's work. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more of these questions. Um, this one, let's see, we got a few more. So, guys, there's so many of you that it, I can't see them all, which is good and bad. It's good because there's so many of you here, which is amazing. It's bad because I can't see them all. But we will do more of these, I promise. Um, let's see. Oh, I just saw a good one. Um, okay, this one. Uh, oh, lost it. Man, I wish I could keep this from auto refreshing. <laughs> and uh, you cannot. <laughs> no, I cannot. Um, okay, I just saw one. It looks like it's going away. Can you see all of the? Yes. Or, okay, so one was asked by a guy named Nick, just N I C, and it said, How does he reconcile? He's having trouble with Calvinism, Arminianism. Um, Answer the question. I'll find it. Okay. So Nick asked that I'm having trouble reconciling you know, the whole Calvinism, Arminianism. What do you do? Um, how do we handle the, the divide among Christians between Calvinists and Arminians? It's half of the guests that have popped in tonight. Well, I don't know about half. I haven't done the math, but a number of the guests that have popped in tonight have been Calvinists. And some of my favorite professors and scholars are Calvinists. I'm not a Calvinist. And I think that there are some things that people do right and do wrong when it comes to Calvinism and Arminianism. And I'm going to give you two things to not do. Number one, don't make it a fellowship issue. Don't label someone who's a Calvinist a false teacher if you're an Arminian. And if you're a Calvinist, don't label an Arminian a false teacher. Now, you can, somebody may be a false teacher for other reasons, but that is is not one of them. Christians from the earliest days all the way back to the time of Augustine have differed over how they read and understand the concept of God's election and God predestining or foreordaining and, and how the atonement works. All of these, it goes back to the early centuries of the church. So do not divide and look at somebody as not a Christian because they are on the opposite side of you of the Calvinist Arminian debate. That's one error. The other error to avoid is the one that says it doesn't matter. We just don't talk about it. That's not helpful either. There are things that should be in the best sense of the word sparred over. That's what Disciple Dojo is all about. Sparring, pushing, challenging. Sparring is not fighting, but sparring is simulating a fight to make each other better. And that's what Calvinists and Arminians need to learn how to do. They need to learn how to spar graciously. So I recommend if you're struggling with it, don't just say, well, I'm a Calvinian. I think they're both, you know, it all work out in the end and it doesn't matter. No, it does matter. How we view God and his election of a people is very important. But don't make it an issue that you break fellowship over someone with or that you become antagonistic and divisive over. So if you don't know where you land, read both sides and read the best of both sides, not a straw man of both sides. Don't go for the YouTubers out there that have an angry YouTube image and why Arminians are false teachers and Pelagianism and all this nonsense. And don't gravitate to the Arminians that think Calvinists are from the devil. There's, there's, a, there's enough of that noise out there. We don't need to add to it. Read the best and the most charitable interactions between the two and form your conclusions based on listening to both sides and weighing their arguments in light of what you read in scripture. Don't proof text. If, it's an, if it were something that you could just quote a Bible verse and that would have cleared it up, it would have been cleared up about 1,700 years ago, but it hasn't been. And that means that faithful, solid Christians can look at the same Bible and based on which presuppositions they give more weight to can come to different conclusions. So take that approach um, with each other and, and, and 
go from there. We have two video series here on the channel. One where I, it's called explaining Calvinism to a bunch of Methodists, where I explained Calvinism in a campus ministry of non-Calvinists. And I tried to do it fair. And the viewers who saw it that are Calvinists, they most of, almost all of them, in fact, said, thank you. This was a fair representation of what we believe. And then the follow-up video I have is why I'm not a Calvinist. And that's where I give my response, why I don't ultimately find their arguments persuasive, even though I love them as brothers and sisters in Christ. So that's my answer to that question. And because you asked such a good question, I am going to send you, Nick, the Quest Study Bible in honor of that question. Were you able to find him, Gregory? Am I unmuted? Yes, I was able to find him. Okay. Um, I lost him by then. Is it okay if I select a question for yes. you to answer? I would love that. That would actually keep me from having to do it. I got a great question. Maybe it's because it's what I'm reading right now. But here's one question from Scott Harris. Why is belief, and you can tell what I'm reading right now. Why is belief in the rapture so popular? Scott Harris asks a great question. Why is belief in the rapture so popular? Two, re two reasons, sensationalism and good marketing. That's why it's popular. The rapture, the belief that Jesus was going to, is it would come and take the church out of the world before doing other stuff and then doing other stuff and then coming again. Um, no Christian believed that before the 1800s. Now I know some YouTube commenters have come on and said, that's not true. And you need to read this book by this. I've, 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 spent 20 years on this issue and I have not found anything before the 1800s that actually and specifically teaches the doctrine known as the rapture. I've seen things attributed to people from ancient history that somewhat tangentially could fit with the view of a pre-tribulational rapture. Uh, yes, but you will not find the system of theology presented then uh, before then. It, it's a doctrine that arose, but it arose at a time of great upheaval in the world. It arose at a time, I mean, the American Civil War, that was when the rapture started really getting on people's radar through these prophecy conferences uh, on the East Coast and in the Niagara area. And there's a great book, actually, I just finished it um, last, I just finished this book earlier. Um, Daniel Hummel's book, The Rise and Fall of Dispensationalism. This book is a fantastic walkthrough of how the doctrine of the rapture arose, what we know of it today as the rapture, and, um, and sort of how it developed. The main reason is because of more than any other, this. You would have that book. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this this book made this doctrine popular. The late great planet Earth, Hal Lindsey. This took old theology that nobody was reading, tucked away in dispensationalist textbooks, and it applied it to what was going on during the Cold War. And that got people's attention. And folks like John Hagee and David Jeremiah and others have been doing the same thing ever since. Grab a headline, stick it to a Bible verse, boom, blood moons. Something happens in the Middle East. Here's the rise of the beast or the antichrist or this one world government or the, I mean, it's it's never ending because when you can make prophecy apply to anything, you can apply it to anything and you can scare people. And that's what uh, rapture doctrine thrived on, you know, from the 60s, 70s, 80s, my entire lifetime. So, uh, yeah, that's why it's so popular and uh, good marketing and sensationalism. And, and yeah, that's it. So Greg, you picked that question. Uh, who asked that question? I got it written down already. That was Scott Harris. Scott, Scott all right, that was Scott Harris. Uh, Scott, I am gonna send you, you will get the basic study Bible, NIV basic study Bible that you can either love and cherish or you can pass on to someone else who needs it. Uh, but send your info to Gregory and we will get that headed your way. Okay. I'm going to pick several, several people have commented in this chat and I think it's a, it might be a fair uh, comment um, that it's time for another 
um, Baker Study Bible giveaway. That's why you're the producer. Let's do it. Let's do it. Where's number? Okay. Get get ready. Get near your keyboards, guys. We're going to do something similar. You're going to have to put something in the chat. I'm going to select everyone that puts something in the chat. I'm going to throw it into the Wheel of Names, and you can go to wheelofnames.com to see it. You're not going to see those names, but that's what it looks like. It's just a random um, selector. It's not too necessarily. We might say something else. Um, you tell us a little bit of, about like super quickly while we're you know kind of building up the hype for it um, on this this study Bible. What makes it so amazing for? Yeah, so years? if you if you didn't see the review, uh, this is one of my most viewed videos, and it kind of I mean it surprised me. I just I was at a used bookstore, like I said in Georgia. I picked this up and I was like, huh, I didn't even know Baker had a study Bible. Let me buy a copy, take it home, and look through it. I brought it home. I looked through it. The scholars who contributed to it are phenomenal. Um, just the layout of the book. I mean, all this is in the video. So folks, go watch it. But the layout, the way it's laid out on the page, the amount of uh, or the insights, the way they handle The thing I love the most about it was the way it handled places where Christians disagree. This was put together by a broad range of scholars. And I had just gotten back from SBL. And when I was looking through the contributor list to, I mean, there are dozens and dozens of scholars. These are some of the names, Gary Burge, J. Scott Duvall, Tripper Longman III, Andrew Hill, Walter Kaiser, my old professor, Victor Hamilton, Roy Gain, Mark Boda. Um, I mean, just a who's who of solid biblical scholars whose work Lynn Kohick, um, the Peter Davids, like these are just phenomenal scholars. And, and that's, I'm, I'm literally just touching on a few of the names. So a lot of the things that I said, what you should look for in a good study Bible, I was just being surprised at how many of those things were getting ticked off, like checked off on the list by the Baker illustrated study Bible. And then as soon as I did the review, I just put it up. I was like, and guys, I don't think this is still in print physically. I think digitally it's still in print. I mean, it's still available digitally, but I think it's out of print. But I've reviewed study Bibles before that have gone out of print. And it's just because you could find them out there in used bookstores. You could find them on eBay, Alibris, uh, Abe Books or Abe Books. Uh, <coughs> you could find it. So I was like, let me put the review out there in case people come across this. And it blew up. They were selling the next two weeks for hundreds of dollars on eBay um, because of that book, uh, because of that review. And I just had no idea. So that's what it is. Um, somebody says, let's bombard the publisher. Yes, that that is the way to get, if you want this Bible back on the market, you have to vocally let Baker know, hey, there's a big market for this and I want it back on the market. I mean, that's just, that's the expression, vote with your dollars. So, so you, you guys ready for the hype? We've, we've hyped it up. We're ready to go. We're going to use the wheel of names, and we are going to pick on your mark. And hold on. Let me do this. It's not going to be for 60 seconds this time. We're going to cap it off at 30 seconds because it was a metric crap ton of names la of list <laughs> last time. Um, so in 30 seconds, anyone who's interested in becoming part of the giveaway, put six in the chat. Go Type six in the chat right the now. Number six. Just the number six. <clears throat> Not the number one. The number Not six. The number one. Six. Not the We're number at 10 two. Seconds already. <laughs> 12 seconds. 13. We're halfway there. 15 seconds. <laughs> 21, 22, right. four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, 30 seconds. Stop. All right. Someone put 666. Awesome. <laughs> so hold on. Let me get this populated into the random number generator. All right. And guys, we will do one more of these at the end. At the very end of this stream, we'll have one more of these. Um, you get a chance to end. But if for while Gregory's getting those ready, yeah, I mean, if I agree, when you say Baker needs to reprint this one, uh, Lucinda Schaefer said, I totally agree. And the thing that will make them do it is knowing that there's an audience for it. That's just basic business. So 
this Bible, I think you should bombard their customer service phone line or their website, their email, you know, let publishers hear what you want because there's a lot of stuff out there that's honestly not worth the price of the paper it's printed on. And then there's stuff like this that goes out of print because this came out five years ago. I didn't even know about this. I don't know how I didn't know about it. I do this for a living. I had no clue this was out. So when something comes across the radar, the best way to, to, to make publishers aware of it is to buy it and let them know this is, this is what we want. We want more of this. So how are we doing, Gregory? Pulling all the, it's a lot of names. I'm literally still scrolling through all the names. There we go. Okay, got it. Stop. <laughs> no worries. <clears throat> okay. And we are rolling. All right. Here we go. Here we the go. The winner Here we is. Go. Hold on. This will be the winner of in the background. The Baker Illustrated Study Bible number two. Cindy Anderson. Cindy, Cindy Anderson. Anderson. Anderson Cindy or Henderson? C I N D Y Anderson. Anderson. Cindy Anderson. Congratulations. And as a matter of fact, I, I I think I can share this. I'd like to share an entire screen this screen tell me if this is visible yes i can yeah, see that's it. the that's the but you see all of the little <laughs> the little slivers that's guys this is how many of you entered this that's, that's wild that, that said six in that short span of time in 30 yeah. seconds that's listen, why i got it at 30 seconds it is crazy you were right to do it guys listen listen all of you that didn't win and there's a ton of you Send an email to Baker through their website saying, we tried to win this on the Disciple Dojo live stream. We weren't able to. We want a copy of this Bible. I mean, that will put it on their radar even more and, and decisions that are made are based on interest. So that's my only advice to you. I don't have a source on how to get more of these. Some people have said like, oh, it's out of print. Where can I get one? I don't know. I don't know, guys. I just review it. And that's a resource I think should come back in print. I also think the Zondervan Archaeological Study Bible should come back in print. Those of you that watched that review, you can see why I say that. Um, congratulations, Cindy. We're going to do one more at the end of the stream. It's about 920. We've got about 40 more minutes that we're going to do this. So I like the taking questions, and I also like asking some questions. So I answered all the questions, I think, that first round. I want to ask a couple of questions for some of the next giveaways that we're going to do. Um, I have, sorry, these are all over the place. So it takes me. Some people are asking in the chat right now, can we send the email to Baker? I almost feel bad for them, but I will pull that up and I'll put it in the chat in a couple of minutes. Cause oh, I absolutely do think it's a good idea. To yeah, email yeah, yeah. them and let them know we love this Bible. We want it. We saw it on Disciple Dojo. Please put this Bible back into print. That's that's they move to what the audience says. Yeah. And, and guys, when you do email them, don't email them angry. They aren't in control of what sells and what doesn't sell. And if after five years a Bible isn't selling and meeting the numbers, obviously they're going to choose to discontinue it. Uh, so just let them know, hey, I didn't know this was a thing until I saw this Disciple Dojo review and I really want a copy of this. Please consider bringing it back in print. That's all you got to say. A nice, polite email. Um, you know, that's how the golden rule applies to emails, folks. Email the way you would want someone to email you if you were making the decision. Um, and somebody asked, can you do that with Zondervan's email as well? And Gregory, if you are able to find... Yep the email to Zondervan customer service or, um, uh, yeah, to Zondervan's Bible publishing department. Absolutely. Okay. Let's do, we got a couple of more of these. All right. Um, I'm going to ask a question and do this. Let's see. Okay. 
the next one that we are going to give away is before I forget, Cindy, please remember to send your email, your uh, mailing address so we can get that to you. The yes. other, the other, including the other person that won the first Baker, I got your email. I've gotten tons of emails with mailing addresses. So thank you for getting them over here. Um, Cindy, Cindy Anderson, please send your um, mailing address to the email on the screen ASAP. Go ahead. Jay. Yes. Yes. And guys, remember when you do, if you are international, we are asking that you would pay shipping. Um, if it's prohibitive and you can't afford to have it shipped, we can't afford to have it shipped either. And so just let us know if you'd like to, to gift it to somebody else uh, who does have a U.S. postal address. Or if you have a friend who has a U.S. postal address, we're happy to ship it to them and they can send it to you. But just with how many Bibles we're giving away and us being a very, very small, uh, underfunded nonprofit, we, 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 uh, I wish we could. I would love to ship all over the world um, free of charge, but we just can't do it. We're going to give away the next one is uh, we're going to give away the chronological study Bible. I've reviewed this one here on the channel. People have asked a lot about chronological Bibles. Some people love them. Some people don't. Um, I don't. I'm, I'm not in the camp where I'm personally a fan of uh, chronological Bibles, but I get why some people like them and I don't begrudge them for that. And so this one I've reviewed here on the channel. You can check out the review. And what I want to do is I want you to put in the chat. Um, we've done that. We've done that. We've done that. Which Disciple Dojo guest, and this is not just for who came on the live stream tonight, but in any of the episodes that we've done here on the channel, which guest interview have you enjoyed the most and why? So for the next 60 seconds, which guest interview have you enjoyed the most and why? And I am going to pick a winner from that. Here we go. All right. We've got some for Carl. We've got David De Silva. We've got Mark Ward. Uh, Senator Greg Abbott has not been a guest. <laughs> so I'm Yet. sorry if you Yet. like this person. They have not been a guest. Um, he's not a senator. He's the governor of Texas. Oh, yeah. okay. All good. <laughs> All right. Well, I didn't even know who he is. Uh, <laughs> Kelly Levesque, I'm new to your channel. Kelly, welcome. We're glad you're here on the channel. Uh, so you guys are saying who, but you're not telling me why. And that's part of the question. You got to tell me who your favorite guest is and why. How are we doing on time? 10 more seconds. <clears throat> there we go. There we go. All right. I can tell you by um, volume who's most selected so far, um, which is actually surprising. David De Silva, Apocrypha. Multiple people, um, multiple people have commented him. Yeah. All right. I'm going to pick. Okay. That's time. All right. No more. Um, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to break the rules. I'm going to pick two. I'm going to pick two. The first one I'm going to pick is. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Keep refreshing. I'm, I think I'm getting it delayed from what you're seeing, Gregory. Um, Tim Eichhorst. Tim Eichhorst. I think I'm saying that right. Said Mark Ward. He's a legit genius. Yep. I um, saw that one as well. I agree. I love Mark. I think he is a legit genius. And you were the first person to answer and provide and say why. So. I'm going to give the chronological study Bible to you for that answer. Then somebody, let's see, let me scroll. I'm going to do some of these. Um, somebody said, uh, uh, come on, come on. Okay. Katie Johnston. Katie Johnston said, Olatunde Howard. I loved his insight into relationships and love. 
Uh, Katie Johnston. I that's a I, I agree. I Olatunde is one of my favorite people in this world, and he is an incredibly gifted and spirit filled uh, counselor. And he's he's just when I think of wisdom and the ability to be heard, he's who I go to. And so I love that you said Olatunde. He he doesn't have any published uh, you know books. I mean, he has some books that he's published, but any like big name published books yet uh, doesn't have a national platform. But he is. If you folks, if you didn't see the episode, Olatunde Howard and I talked about the do Christians need counseling? You know, is is, bibli- is psychology and counseling and psychiatry, are those biblical? And we talked about relationship concepts, and he's a marriage and family therapist with brilliant insight. That was a great up. Ep- that's a that's one of those that needs to be viewed more than it has been. And so if you haven't seen that episode, check it out. Um, so, Katie, I am going to send your way the Bible Speaks Today study Bible. This is one that's uh, geared towards small group usage, and it is pulled from the Bible Speaks Today commentary series, a lot of the insights. I've reviewed it on the channel as well. So, Katie, I think that's right. I think I'm getting the names right. Uh, Yep. You guys send the information to Gregory, Um, but we're giving those two away. All right. (laughs) Lewis, Lewis, FYI, uh, to, to Verberg is in the chat, and I like her comment. She liked JSK eighty nine because they said she's intelligent and cute, and I concur. They did say that. I saw that comment myself, and I thought it was pretty amazing. How about we let them win something? I love it, and you know what? Um, I have a great thing for them to win. We are gonna give. Let's see. Hold on. Um, we're going to give JSK89 this Devotions on the Hebrew Bible 54 Reflections to Inspire and Instruct. So, because Lois does so much work with the Jewish background, again, this has the text in Hebrew, but it also has the text in the ESV beside it. So if your Hebrew is minimal or not at all, you can still get insight from this. That's a great one. And JS something, something, whatever it was, there you go. And I agree. Lois is intelligent. She's just an absolute doll. We love her to death. So we'll figure out how to have Lois back on the stream. All right. We are moving along. We got about a half hour left. We we got an interesting one here. What do you think about this, JM? Mark I just Walker saw that. Asked. I just <laughs> saw that. <laughs> At a thousand subs, will he start giving away his action figures? I, I've, it'd be hilarious. I get so many comments uh, from Christians, Christians who say, look at you surrounded by all those idols. And especially on my Orthodox study Bible review, there was a meme that went out. I don't know if you guys saw this. A meme went out that had me and it holding up the Orthodox study Bible as I was reviewing it with all my superhero <laughs> seminary action figures. And it said, when somebody criticizes icons while surrounded by their true idols or something like that. <laughs> and it made me laugh, one, because it brought viewers to the channel. I appreciate that. But two... I wasn't even criticized. I was pointing out how beautiful the icons in the Orthodox study Bible were and never in the video said one thing against icons. I actually thought like I have an appreciation for icons. I have an icon over to my right that somebody gave me of, of Michael, the archangel. So the idea, it, it just goes to show, and, and people commented on that video. People don't watch videos before leaving comments. And I still get comments from people talking about, oh, we see your true idols and you don't like us having our icons. They just assume because I'm Protestant that I think icons are wrong. And I don't I actually don't see anything wrong with icons. I just don't. That's not my tradition. I, I can appreciate them aesthetically. But it was just so funny. The, the conclusions people jump to just because of my action figures behind me on the shelf. Um. And speaking of action figures, somebody said the dojo wouldn't be the same without the action figures around. I agree. Guys, the Superhero Seminary playlist. This is a gripe I'm going to share with you on this live stream. 
my superhero seminary videos, like a 10 minute video with the thing or Ant-Man or Black Panther, those take me longer than any other video on this channel. Those take me longer to research and then to write and then to do the voice reading and then to do the uh, photos and then to edit it all together. You would not believe how much longer. And that's why there hasn't been one in such a long time. They just take longer. Um, but they're my, honestly, they're my favorite stuff here on the channel. And they, I, they don't get the views that study Bible reviews get. People like to watch people flipping through the pages of a Bible um, which is fine. I'm grateful, but I'm like, man, the real meat in this channel is on the superhero seminary playlist. And so few people actually go over there and watch those videos. So we're going to do the next round of giveaways. We're coming up on the end. We're going to give away resources <clears throat> and I got a ton of these that I want to do. So we're going to start with the uh, for my Lutheran and my mainline friends, and then for my evangelical fundamentalist friends, we got a little bit of something for everybody here. So, Ooh, we're going to like do, this. I have two copies of the Lutheran Study Bible in the ESV, and then one copy of the Lutheran Study Bible in the NRSV. Uh, this one, does this one contain the Apocrypha? I can't remember. Um, I, uh, I feel we can see. I don't think, no. Um, this one does have an accompanying volume with the Apocrypha, but these volumes don't. So I have two Lutheran study Bibles, ESV, one Lutheran study Bible. This was the one that was the more mainline. This is from the ECLA. This, these are put together by the Lutheran Conference, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. These are the conserv So these are like two ends of the spectrum, conservative Lutherans, mainline, more progressive Lutherans. We're going to give away both of these. And I'm also going to give away, well, we'll do these first. Um, so here's a question the, on screen for you to, to, to tackle. I think it's a phenomenal question. What is, let's see it. Segway Chimp asks, what is a great book to lead men through for a Bible study focused on the Old Testament? Because mm. there's not enough Bible studies, this is my own commentary, focused on the Old Testament. I, Talk to us, bro. I agree. I'm going to tell you, I think that, and it would depend on the book, but in general, anything you can get by Christopher Wright. Anything you can find by Christopher Wright, get it and read through it. He has uh, his book, The God I Don't Understand. That's a great place to start uh, for a small group that, that's like coming to the Bible. And, and he's an Old Testament scholar, so that's sort of his focus. I would recommend that. I would recommend his, it's called The God I Don't Understand. I would recommend his book, uh, Knowing Jesus Through the Old Testament, another phenomenal book. And then I would recommend the commentary books that he's done. He has one, uh, Hearing the Message of Daniel. It's so good. It's so good. And then he has another one, Hearing the Message of Ecclesiastes. And I've been using and teaching from that, and it is phenomenal as well. He is one of my favorite scholars. He's like a, a dream guest here at Disciple Dojo that we would love to have someday. That's what I would recommend. Um, yeah, those by N.T. Wright. I mean, by, by Christopher Wright. Christ we right. jokingly call him O.T. Wright because he's the Old Testament <laughs> version. Um, what does um, um, Segway Chimp win for that question? I am going to give Segway Chimp, if you would like one of these Lutheran study Bibles for that question, it's headed your way. All you have to do, email Gregory, and he will get that to you. Putting the email um, address back up there here in a second. Where was it? Somebody asked, do we have to write the 95 Theses in order to participate? No, but I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Who? Oh, it's a great question. Uh, Warren Rayburn asks, who would make your Mount Rushmore of theologians and Bible scholars? That's a you good see one. that one, Gregory? Yep. Warren Rayburn. That's a great question. Um, 
Warren, I'm going to send you the other Lutheran study Bible for that question if you want it. So reach out to Gregory. Who would be my Mount Rushmore of biblical scholars and theologians outside of the Bible and the apostles? Let's just say that because everybody be like, Jesus. Well, yeah, of course, Jesus, Paul, Peter, James. But in church history, people that I think you just have to read. Um, I would put on there and Mount Rushmore, you only get four. So this is hard. I would put, um, I'd put John Wesley on there. I think he doesn't get enough love, um, as a, a, a theologian, even because he was a preacher, but he is, I think everybody should read John Wesley. His insights are phenomenal. Even when I disagree with him, they're wonderful. It's kind of hard to read because he writes in that 1800 or 18th century, 1700s type of English. Um, I would put John Stott on that list. I think everybody should read John Stott. He is just, when you think of the best of evangelicalism, he's up there. And then I would put, um, I mean, there's their church fathers and uh, like you could say uh, Chrysostom. Um, some people might put Augustine. I would not. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Augustine. Uh, you know, Anselm. John, John Calvin was a phenomenal biblical interpreter. I don't think he was as great a theologian as he was a biblical interpreter. Charles Spurgeon was a phenomenal preacher. Even when I disagree, I think his insights are just amazing. I, but if I had to pick formative ones that have really shaped me, my last two, so I would put Wesley, um, I would put John Stott and I would put, uh, Christopher Wright and N.T. Wright. I think those would be my four in terms of accessible stuff you can read. Now, church history snobs would be like, Oh, you left out. Yeah. I left out a lot. <laughs> But in terms of people you could pick up and start reading now and glean from, those would be my recommendations. John Wesley, John Stott, Christopher Wright, N.T. Wright. Those are, those are my four. Um, let me pick uh, who just – that was Some, for the others. Uh, this is just classic. Someone comments. Um, there we go. Those are the right answers. <laughs> you have a very, very funny audience. I love it. Lois, Lois mentioned, Lois, I'm so glad you stuck around and you're in the chat. Lois mentioned some outstanding Jewish Bible scholars. And I, yeah, I saw completely Sarna agree there. with Lois's yep. list. If you can stick that. Yes. These are names you should know as well. Um, Nahum Sarna, Joshua Heschel, Jacob Milgram. You can't know anything about Leviticus without taking into account Milgram. Um, uh, Jeffrey Teague, yeah, definitely. I'm I'm loving Fox's commentary on Ecclesiastes in the JPS commentary series. So, yes, if I were to widen it outside of church history and include uh, Jewish commentators, absolutely. Lois's list is great. Definitely start with those. I'm going to chime in super quickly. Mm -hmm. This is who Lois is talking about, Sarna. Yes. If you are like a Bible nerd that's into the Old Testament, that's definitely where I qualify. Um, I love the Old Testament because it's just unique. Um, and you have questions about Exodus, like the plagues. One of the big questions, like I literally copied and pasted my answer. Uh, it was a class that I was taking and I needed a, um, you know, explain a little bit about um, God hardening Pharaoh's heart. Mm -hmm. This scholar chipped it to pieces, like in depth, Easy yep. to read, not super complex explanation on exactly what Exodus was talking about. And he breaks it down into numbers. The first three times that, you know, Exodus mentions it, it's Pharaoh hardening his own heart. Then the yep. other times it's, you know, God hardening Pharaoh's heart. So the impression that it was only God hardening his heart kind of against his will completely breaks that apart excellent scholar on yep. Exodus and on, you know, the curses, the, the, the plagues, sorry. Phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal. The guy. only scholar who's better, yeah, the only scholar who's better at answering that question is uh, Professor Ben Grimm here behind me <laughs> on um, Superhero Seminary episode on why would Pharaoh harden God's heart? Let the thing answer it because uh, he pulls from some of those very same sources. Uh, <laughs> so 
let me I want to we got the Lutheran study Bible. We still need to give away this one. And I am looking at actually let's do this. Greg, can you do a quick uh if can we have them if they want to enter for some study Bibles? Because I have a couple that not everybody may want as much as others, and I want to make sure that the people want it who want it get it. You want to um, do the name selector, the 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 wheel of names again? Yeah, if we can do the wheel again for three three of these that I have left. Um, I want to do that for, and, and, and let's just do like 30 seconds. Like you said, that was, we can do that real quick. Um, I want to do that for these because these are so polarizing uh, study Bibles. Um, so we're going to pick three names off of the next. And th those are going to be for the read them off again, the Baylor annotated no, no, no. study Bible. What's the we, other we one? Need to do them, I want to do them uh, separately because not the oh. same readers may not want these. True. Um, True. So the first one is the Lutheran. This was the more mainline version, the ECLA Lutheran Study Bible. So if you're Lutheran. interested in the Lutheran Study Bible, this is the one from, uh, not from Augsburg. This is, yeah, from Augsburg Fortress Press. If you are interested in this one, which I've reviewed here on the channel, this is the first Lutheran Study Bible I reviewed. And then have other people say, review the other one. So I did that one. If you're interested in this one, the Lutheran Study Bible, uh, drop an L. Let's do a capital L. Does that work, Gregory? Yep. Capital L starting now. If you're interested in winning the Lutheran Study Bible, the, the ECLA version, this is the new revised standard version. Uh, drop an L in the chat. And we want to make sure that someone who could use go this. There we go. we got about 30 seconds left, a few seconds left. 10 <clears throat> seconds left. We're at 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. Boom. Okay, stop. All right. There we go. That's the cutoff. So all of those are going to be entered. And Gregory is going to choose from the Wheel O Bibles. And while he's getting that right, just tell me when you're ready, Greg. You can stop me and tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Um, okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and... Pick that you winner. Can, you can probably hear it going in the background. We need a Vanna White on screen. <clears throat> and who do we have? Nope. It's a, it, it picked the wrong name. One second. So, <laughs> hold on. It's coming. It picked somebody who didn't enter. It, it picked the space in between. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why AI is not going to take over the world, folks. Uh, as Gregory says, L U X X Y, Luxy. L U X X Y, Luxy. You are the winner of the Lutheran Study Bible, ECLA version. All right, we got two more. I want to do that exact same two more times. Um, let me know when you're ready, Gregory. Yep, ready. Okay, so the next one is going to be for the Evangelical Study Bible. If you saw the review, I just did this one. This is put together by the people at Liberty University. And I, tongue-in-cheek, said in my review, this should just be called the Liberty Study Bible um, for reasons that I get to in the video. So if you want to enter to win the Evangelical Study Bible, then why don't we drop an E in the comments. Can we do that? 30 seconds going now. Now. Ooh, Drop an E it. if you want to be entered to win the Chili Dragon is all over it. Evangelical Study Bible. Put an E in there. Here we go. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of E's. This one's popular. 21, 22, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven, nine, thirty. Boom. All right. There we go. Let's see if the wheel picks a real name this time. Let's get the wheel up over here. If you watch the discussion Gregory and I had, uh, he does not think AI is going to take over the world and destroy us all. Because as Gregory says, AI is only pretending to be intelligence. Right, for, now. for now. For <laughs> now. 
It is only simulating. Somebody said, play the Jeopardy theme while we wait. <laughs> if I knew how to do that, I would, because that'd be pretty good. The problem would be the theme, because the Jeopardy theme is copyrighted. But we That's could right. play music very easily. There's IP laws. They'll get and you every we time. we have a winner. Billy Goodwin. Billy, Billy Good Goodwin. Billy Goodwin. Good win. You won the Evangelical Study Bible. Send your email to Gregory at the email address so we can get it to you. Perfect. Uh, somebody asked, what version is the Evangelical Study Bible? This is the New King James Version. And then we have one more on the opposite end of the spectrum, and that is going to be the Baylor Annotated Study Bible. I reviewed this one. This is a mixed bag in terms of the the theological leanings of the contributors. And after this giveaway, JM, we have mm -hmm. another surprise guest right in the pocket, waiting, ready to go. I love it. I love it. All right. Let's do the Baylor annotated. Let's have you drop a B. Look at you already on the spot, chill dragon. Drop a B in the comment section for the next starting 30 now. seconds, starting now. And you will be entered to win the Baylor annotated. This is the new revised standard version. And it includes the text of the Apocrypha in the very back. So you get the Bible and a little bit more. 18, 19, 20. A lot of people want this Baylor. Holy yeah, smoke. Look at that. 27, 8, 9, 30. Boom. Got it. All right. All right, let's spin the wheel of destiny and see who will be destined to get Baylor annotated. And again, just to remind you, you will, if you win any of these Bibles, uh, every now and then you will come across some highlights uh, because I actually look at these. And when I review them and I go through and I highlight stuff that it's important for the review. Some people were asking, what's the email address again? It is now on your screen. We're there populating the wheel of names, and then we're going to bring in the next guest. All right. Wheel of names is spinning. And we have ourselves a winner. T.J. Maverick won this one. T.J. Maverick. Maverick. Congratulations, my friend. The Baylor Annotated Study Bible is on its way as long as you send your shipping information to Gregory at the email address. And congratulations. Patiently waiting in the corner is our next awesome scholarly guest. All right. Who do we have? Hey, James. What's up? Congratulations. Mark Cannon. Guys, this is Mark Cannon. If you watched our episode where we talked all about uh basically online bible tools bible software and mark is one of the folks over at step bible mm -hmm. good to see you man how are you good good just got back in the uh workshop uh did my first workshop since the demise of bible works and bible software last week uh a friend invited me out to for a a group of seminarians at duke divinity school so yeah. Uh, that was, uh, kind of exercising the, the, uh, old, um, mouse and, uh, keyboard fingers, uh, yeah. to show off step Bible there. Yeah. So that's what you were doing. You were uh, doing uh, step Bible coaching, how to use it. Yeah. Um, group of, um, the black seminarians union invited me out. Um, cool. one of their members had, uh, interned uh, a couple summers ago at, uh, the churches I'm pastoring. So yeah. it was uh, good to meet some folks out there. That's awesome. Well, tell, uh, we've got viewers here on the live stream and we've just, we've been giving away a bunch of Bibles and resources and um, I'm going to have you actually, would you like to uh, help me give away a couple of study Bibles? Yeah, I've been popping in and out. I was uh, watching all creatures great and small with my wife and uh, pulled you up on the phone every so often. Nice. Uh, <laughs> love it well we um yeah we would we tell folks real quick what's uh to look out for or what's on the horizon with step bible or, or what do you guys have coming down the pipe yeah um the uh 
Hebrew Bible uh, has just added kind of a little grammar feature to uh, identify um, almost like in a little interlinear fashion um, the uh, um, whether it's a noun verb um, uh, various aspects of grammar um, so that's in the pike it's in it's in our on our developer site right now just added a bunch of Bibles um, I mean I have kind of their names but in different languages a number of Japanese Bibles I uh, see couple of Portuguese, looks like uh, Polish, um, some Vulgate, mm -hmm. uh, a number of French Bibles. And um, we, we've been working on Septu some Septuagint stuff. Um, that's, uh, that's a little bit further out. Um, but it's, oh, and um, looking forward to some new things just with the ESV tagging. Um, uh, they've been really working hard on that and looking forward to seeing the fruits of that sometime yeah. soon. Somebody just put on the chat, uh, that just said step Bible is logos for the rest of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for was, every person. That was very clever because disciple dojo's curriculum is Bible for the rest of us. <laughs> uh, so I, I agree. I think there's no reason you should not be using step Bible if you have access to, uh, the internet. It's for every person. Scripture tools yeah. for every person, right? Yeah. Did I get that right? It is. Yeah. You're you're right on the money there. Yeah. And, well, and it doesn't cost any money. That's right. And speaking of not costing money, we're going to give away a couple of Bibles. So let me, I had, um, and you can help me choose. Um, hold on. Sorry, I'm juggling a bunch of stuff. Um so what I want to do is, well, I'll ask a question and I'll let people put their answers and then you can, Mark, go through and you can pick one and I'll pick one, uh, a winner. So the question that I wanted to ask, because it has to do with Bible study and, and Bible resources, is for viewers, those of you in the chat, what is the hardest book of the Bible for you to, to read and understand? Uh, so what's the hardest book of the Bible for you to read and understand? Put that now, and for the next 60 seconds, we'll let those answers come in. And uh, Mark, you can look through the chat as well and see you pick a winner, and I'll pick a winner. And what we're going to give away, so um, we're going to have the one that Mark picks is going to win the Word Study Reference Bible. This is the King James Version. It's also available in New King James, but I reviewed the KJV um, which is uh, obviously for available on Step Bible because it's open source. And so we'll have Mark, the winner that you pick will get this. And then the winner I pick will get the New King James Study Bible, which I've reviewed here on the channel. So these will be what we're giving away for this one. And I think that's about time. Uh, so, Mark, and F FYI, just got to chime in super quickly. We mm -hmm. are five minutes or so away from the top of the hour, which is the much ballyhooed and promised Baker giveaway. I believe yes. it's the last one, if my memory serves me correct. Yes, Back we're going to do a few more control. of these, so we need to cram it. Guys, the stream may go a couple of minutes over. That's okay. Um, but let's go ahead and, Mark, do you see any of these that you want to pick? Uh, I want to go with two, but um, pick one of them. Actually, um, you pick them both. You pick them both, and we'll give. Oh no! I've been um, picking. I've been picking winners all night. So you pick. Who are the two? Well, uh, I think you got to go with Revelation um, in terms of just the the number, and and I was going to go with. Uh, Song of Songs or Song of Solomon, but can I say no and go to Ezekiel? Is that bad? Or do I, since I voiced it, you know what? I... We're going to add it. We're going to pick those three okay. because I have more Bibles to give away. Uh, so the Mark picked the, the, the Revelation, Song of Songs, and Ezekiel. Those were his choices. So, Gregory, can you see who the first person that put Revelation was? I can, and I'm checking it right now. Oh, 
a lot of people put Revelation. Yeah. While Gregory's finding it, we have here at Disciple Dojo an entire course that walks chapter by chapter through the book of Revelation. It was filmed over a decade ago, live at a local church setting. Uh, the down, the workbook is downloadable, which includes a translation that I did of Revelation that, that kind of is meant to show the literary elements of it. And that's entirely free here at Disciple Dojo. Just go to discipledojo.org slash revelation. And you can do that entire course. You, your small group. Who do we have, Gregory? Robert M. was the first. All right. Robert M. First person that put Revelation. Robert M. You're going to win the KJV word study. The second one that Mark helped us pick uh, was Song of Songs. And do we see who put that? I don't want to say a name because it might not be the first. Um. I am going to actually, no, I'm going to say that I'm going to make the call on this one. Uh, Song of Songs, Jennifer Bell, Jennifer Bell, you picked Song of Songs, Jennifer Bell. If you want to claim the New King James Study Bible, put your send your information through the email to Gregory. And then, Mark, you had mentioned Ezekiel mm -hmm. and we're going to give away. I have a couple more. Uh, we're going to give away the Life Connections Study Bible. I reviewed this one here on the channel. And so who put, did anybody put Ezekiel? Who did, do you see, Mike, uh, Mark? I mean, they're all gone now. So I, I, I'm, I'm scanning through it as we speak. So you're looking for the first Ezekiel, right? Ezekiel, yes. Do, did yeah, two was... people put Ezekiel? I saw a number of them, it seemed. Let's do, Gregory, do the first two that put Ezekiel. Because I have two copies of the Life Connections Study Bible. This is meant to be done in a small group setting. You can check out the review here on the channel. One I've covered with contact paper. Uh, this one was donated. It is not covered. First one was Samuel, just simple S. Samuel. So Samuel, Samuel, I'll send the email address here in a second. And you're looking for the next Ezekiel, right? And then the next one, two people put Ezekiel. So way Samuel. More than, way more out. than two. And these are all very, very complicated names. There's Samuel and there's also Mike. Mike. All right. If you are Samuel and Mike, you are winning the <laughs> Life Connections Study Bible. You know we're probably going to get like 700 Mikes sending us their shipping address, right? Because it's <laughs> such the unique name. Yeah. Clearly. Um, well, whoever does it first, they're the ones paying attention. A couple of people were asking, Cindy in particular, did I get your email? I did get your email with your address, Cindy. So, so far the emails with the addresses have been coming in. Thank you. Yes. Um, Mark Cannon, it was good to see you here at the dojo, yeah. man. Thank you so much for stopping by and, and for just, you know, the support that you showed and coming on the channel. Our interview was a lot of fun. Folks, if you have want to know about Bible software, if you have questions about Bible software, this guy worked for Bible Works. He works with Step Bible now. Um, he's he's my he and between him and Gregory, that's who I'm going to ask questions about software stuff because that's out of my wheelhouse. <laughs> well, I saw something earlier. Someone said when you hit 40,000, you're going to start giving away uh, your um action figures back there so uh yeah that was a good question i think it was a hundred thousand uh, i'm gonna wait 40 is okay. it's gotta be i'm gonna be done for a superman or a batman so uh, i'm, I'm <laughs> a dc guy you're a dc guy yeah, somebody asked earlier guy. somebody asked marvel or dc um i am definitely marvel i grew up on i i grew up watching dc like the cartoons super friends the the cartoon version and I have read a few Batman and I love the Superman movies as a kid with Christopher Reeve. Um, but in terms of like my rooted nerdiness is, is definitely Marvel. So it's, I love when my DC brothers and sisters stop in and yeah, well, can educate me on it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Good to see you, man. Right, Thank you so much. You. For take care. Part. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Gregory, are you there, my friend? 100% right here, bro. Oh, okay. There's your audio. All right. So 
we got um let's get we have some more of these resources to finish and so i'm going to give these away um to people that want to enter again i like the way we did that letting people who want to enter them um, we've done a lot of bibles i want to do some commentary resources so here's what I'm, we're going to do the submit we're just going to kind of do rapid fire um if you want to be entered to win we've got two commentary we got some commentary resources first one i'm going to do is this is by one of my old professors rodney cooper one of my preaching professors this is a commentary Where did I go? Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. That was weird. Yeah, I don't know what happened. So this is a preacher's commentary on the Gospel of Mark by Dr. Rodney Cooper. Um, I would love to give this to somebody. So I also have two more resources. I have the Dictionary of Later New Testament and its Development. This is in the IVP Dictionary series uh, covering the later New Testament books. And so everything after the Gospels and after Paul, but this is a phenomenal resource. And then we have another copy of the first edition of the Dictionary of Paul and his letters. There's a second edition of this out, and most Paul scholars who I've talked to use both because they have different contributors and different articles and different strengths. So these are the commentary, the last commentary resources that we're going to give away for the evening. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a question. And if you would like to be entered to win these, then here's your chance. Wait, are you giving all three away in one bundle? No, no, no. To three different viewers. Oh, individually. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Three, that would have been amazing. Yeah, that would be like, a, I would have, I'd pulled open my Google machine immediately. <laughs> to answer. That'd be a grand prize. So, um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick um, the first one we'll do will be the first one I pick will be for the Mark commentary. So the question I'm going to ask is, tell me your, um, should we go? Here we go. Okay. Give me, I know a lot of people are wanting the, the dictionary one. So for the winner for the Mark commentary, um, tell me your, where did it go? Sorry, guys, it's getting late. I haven't eaten dinner tonight. Uh, okay, I'm going to ask a quick question. For the Mark commentary, give me your favorite. Uh, what? Yeah, let's do this one. This is going to be random. What movie never fails to make you laugh? That's the question. Doesn't have to do with the Bible. And there's no wrong answers. The next 60 seconds, put in the chat. If you want to win this Mark New Testament commentary for preachers, tell me what movie never fails to make you laugh. And I'm just going to pick one. Timer is running. Oh, we got some good ones. 15 seconds. Uh, oh. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 0. All right. Man, we had a lot of good ones. Um, I am going to pick the winner of this one is going to be. I'm going to give this one to Greg Thomas said any Medea movie and uh Solomon gotcha I'm gonna Greg Thomas you are gonna win this commentary by Dr. Rodney Cooper Medea movies have a lot of preaching in them and church characters and Rod Cooper was my preaching professor so that's why I picked this one somebody put Da Vinci Code just kidding <laughs> <laughs> Da Vinci Code makes me laugh that was awesome, that was awesome. Uh, People who take it seriously make me laugh more. Okay, so now for we're going to do these two together. The Dictionary of Later New Testament Development and Paul and his letters. So for these, I'm going to pick two winners. 
you have to tell me. Now, listen, pay attention. We have to get this right. Tell me your favorite episode of Superhero Seminary here on the channel and why. So don't just tell me, don't just put the episode, don't just put like Black Panther or, uh, you know, Mandalorian or any. Tell me your favorite and why. And we're going to let it go for 60 seconds. All right. And I'm going to choose two. Your favorite superhero seminary episodes. Ooh. My hot tea is no longer hot. Rookie move. You should have drank that ages ago. I did. Well, there's a little bit left, but hey. All right. <laughs> hey, Terrence Rag. I'm glad you're watching, but you keep posting comments about the Trinity being unbiblical. Dude, read the room. <laughs> like, this is not your soapbox. <laughs> Good grief. Uh all right. Somebody said, I have not watched those. Well, this is your motivation to start watching them, but too late for this contest. Um, all right. We got some good ones. Remember, you got to tell me what it is and why. Is the time up, Greg? Boom. Time okay. Been up. My apologies. No worries. All right. So for the winner of the Dictionary of Later New Testament and its development, this is going to go to... <laughs> Cameron W. Cameron W. says, Mr. T for the impression. <laughs> True. That was hard doing Mr. T voice uh, without straining my vocal cords. Yes, Mr. T talking about Jesus is say, saying not to call somebody a fool. Uh, if you haven't seen that episode, we got Mr. T right here behind me. Go check it out. That was a fun one to do. The next one is for the dictionary of Paul and his letters. And this one is going to be, I like that some of you are honest and said, I haven't watched any of them yet. I appreciate your honesty. Um, this one is going to be Jason M. Jason M said the Goku episode as a big fan of anime, it held a close place to my heart and I love the way you related it to the Bible. Yes, Professor Goku explaining the rapture. Uh, who else to talk better to talk about riding on a cloud than Son Goku? So I appreciate you, Jason M. You are the winner of the Dictionary of Paul and His Letters. It pays to be a Bible nerd and an uh, animation nerd. So congratulations. Make sure you send your email to Gregory so he can get that to you. Email address is on the screen. Yes. Okay. We have, we, we're a couple of minutes over, but that's okay. We had so many more guests tonight pop in that I, that I didn't expect uh, when I sent out the bat signal to whoever wanted to come. So we have three more study Bibles that I want to give away. And then we're going to do the last Baker Illustrated. All right. Does that sound good? Ooh, fireworks. Nice. Did I do that or did you do that? <laughs> Honestly, what? do not know. And I've, it's happened a couple of times already. It's that I think it's when you, it's certain keywords. Maybe also, it's in the at chat. One point you gave a thumbs up and that did something as well. So is that, I think like thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Okay. So there's some, it's the AI. That's what it yeah, is. It's the that's, AI. that's what it is. Oh, reactions are on, on my end. That's why. And I, I didn't turn off reactions. So, <laughs> okay. We're going to do the last one. Cause it's late. I still haven't had dinner and I'm starving. Um, we did that. We did that. We did that. Gregory, do you have, do you have any uh, questions you think would make? Yep. I have one that I, to be honest, I actually wanted to actually just answer it if I may. And then you could chime in as well. Um, okay. I get this question a lot. What's a good study Bible you'd recommend for a young adult, woman, man, whoever that is new to the faith. This isn't gender specific, but and I, I, I about 90% sure JM has reviewed this Bible. So my mm -hmm. opinion of it might be different than JM's. But this Bible right here, I it's easily available. It's on Amazon. It's not super expensive. 
30, 40 bucks, somewhere thereabouts. This is a hardcover version. There's another one as well. The Cultural Background Study Bible. If you're yeah. a new Christian, new to the Bible, new to, or if you're old Christian and you're just new to the Bible, you haven't gotten into it, a phenomenal Bible to kind of give you a little bit of background without being overly scholarly on, hey, what's the context? You know, what was the original audience? What what was in their mind when they heard things like, you know, uh, you're lukewarm, so I'll spit you out of my mouth? Like, what? how did they understand that? Because grasping what the original audience's intention and understanding of it was is super important for translating and interpreting the Bible correctly. I'm going to shut yeah. up now. All yours. I, that's a great one. And for, for brand new believers, like people that are brand new to the Bible and don't know anything about it, um, I would, that's for the cultural backgrounds is great for people who have those type of questions and want to know more about the background. For people who don't even know what to do with the Bible, uh, my number one is still the Life Application Study Bible in the New Living Translation. I think I've given that to new believers and um, just Overall, that's still my top recommendation. A life application study Bible, in preferably in the New Living Translation. Um, I don't think you can beat that for somebody newer in the faith. But in terms of the what Gregory just mentioned, the cultural background study Bible is phenomenal. And it gives you stuff that you didn't even know that you needed to know. Um, speaking of that, we're going to give away, uh, on that note, the Holy Land Illustrated Bible. So this is not a study Bible, but it does have notes about the background, the, the actual land of the Bible. Um, and it's beautiful. This is in the Christian Standard Bible translation. I've recommended this one here on the channel before. So you can check that out. We're going to give this one away to the next viewer. And um, let me see. I'm looking through. So put in if you want to be entered this for the next 60 seconds um put in uh, let's see what's a good i want to do a good uh let me hear uh the first person that answers correctly this question about the land of the bible first person that can name three of the tribes of Israel who were allotted land in the Bible. I like it. Three, starting now, first one that comes up, three of the tribes of Israel. And my chat is on a delay, so Greg will see those soon. We got them. All right. Who was the, who was the first one? Matt McKnight. Who's Matt already won stuff? Matt's just killing it. We can't let Matt win twice. Oh, so Matt, did you already win? He mm. did. He did. Matt won Glosser House stuff up at the big early part of the evening. All right. But I appreciate the effort, Matt. Yeah, that we do have so many that we can't give two winners away. Uh, here's Tim, here's Timothy Lazola. Is that accurate though? Dan, Gad, and Judah. Dan, Gad, and Judah are three of the tribes. Ooh. There you go. All right. So who is that? Timoth who? Timothy Lazilota. All right. Timothy, send your email or send your info to the email that Greg puts on the screen. Just for clarity, though, Matt, uh, Matt McKnight, so you don't um, feel like you're going to miss out. You are still eligible. Even Everyone who won already is still eligible for the Baker stuff. That's yeah, that one's, that one's random. So yes. whoever wins it, wins it. Yes. Um, so we're going to do one more. We're going to do two more. We're going to do the CSB study Bible, which I've reviewed here on the channel. Um, I actually, this is a great study Bible and you can see that review. And we're going to do the ancient faith study Bible in the CSB. And this one is, this is the one I reviewed, but it's a uh, hardback and it's really nice. It's very pretty uh, binding cover. And it's beautifully laid out. Well, you can't really see it. But anyway, check the review for that. So we're going to do these two. And then we'll do the baker. And then we'll call it a night. And I will get some dinner. <clears throat> so for the Ancient Faith Study Bible, we'll do this one first. The first person who can put 
in the chat, since we're talking about ancient faith and, and church history, my favorite theologian in recent church history is C.S. Lewis. And I've reviewed the C.S. Lewis Bible here on the channel. And if you watch that video, I said, and I've said before, my favorite C.S. Lewis book of all time. So the first person that can put in the chat my favorite C.S. Lewis book, and I'll give you a hint. It's a novel. Hmm. That's the only hint you're going to get. It's a I novel. Like I just caught it. And I'm going to put, Gregory, I'm going to send in the chat. Did you get that? Yep. All right. That, <laughs> that's the answer. You won't believe who won this. You will not believe who won this. All right. You want the first one, right? First one who answered correctly. I'll say the answer is Paralandra. Paralandra is my favorite C.S. Lewis novel. Can you see on the screen who the first person that commented that was? Uh, Maybe slight unfair advantage. Someone by the name of Carmen Joy Imes. <laughs> Carmen <laughs> Imes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Carmen Imes. Hey, this is the, the rules of the rules. First person that get it. Carmen Imes. You are winning the Ancient Faith Study Bible. If Carmen would like to gift that to a viewer, you're more than welcome to. But Carmen's a Disciple Dojo viewer, and she got the right answer, and it is Paralandra. So congratulations. Send Gregory the information if you want this Bible. The last one. This is the CSB Study Bible. And I like somebody said, go ahead, Dr. Imes. <laughs> <laughs> um. The last one is, yeah, okay, here we go. So I want to answer, I wanted to, were there any questions, Gregory, that you thought were really good? I'm, it won't, it will only let me scroll down so far. Yes. Hold uh, on. I yeah. saw a really interesting question that I think would be worth answering. Um, Oh, here we go. Oh. Hold on. I got one for you. Here. And guys, some of you are putting in the chat like that there may be a delay because you're seeing answers before the question's even asked. And um, I I don't know how the mechanics of streaming that's YouTube. Actually work. But that's, that might be a YouTube There thing. absolutely could be a delay. Oh, here's a very nice, easy one. Where is your dojo? Oh, Juan okay. Urbina. Juan Urbina. That's a great question. So Disciple Dojo is the name of this ministry. I don't have a dojo that I run as a business. I do teach. I teach Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Somebody asked if I teach karate. No, I trained karate as a kid, but I teach Brazilian jiu-jitsu. That's what my black belt is in. And I teach at a place called Leadership Martial Arts. And we are under Henzo Gracie in here in Charlotte. But Disciple Dojo, this ministry, one of our outreaches, I run a program. And you can find out about this. And maybe Gregory can throw this up on the screen. You can find out about this at discipledojo.org slash refugee. I run a program here, part of Disciple Dojo's ministry. And we've been doing this since 2015. It's called Refugee Jitsu. And Refugee Jitsu is a free weekly anti-bullying and self-defense class for refugee, immigrant, and other lower income kids here in Charlotte who just need jujitsu but can't afford to train it. We take kids as young as seven all the way up until they graduate. Um, but we it, it's a it's completely donor funded. The kids they can't buy their uniform, they have to earn their uniform when they've come long enough. And I think they're intentionally serious about training and it's not just a fad or a hobby, then I give them a uniform and a belt and they become one of our students. And we've had over a hundred kids come through the program. We have one employee that helps me on a part-time basis, like five hours a week, um, who was one of my early students. His family is from Honduras and he is now working in a hospital. He's trying to go to school for, to become a, I believe nursing just a great kid. We've had kids from uh, Afghanistan who are refugees 
who had worked for their parents work to translate for the military. And then when things got bad, they had to bring them over here because their lives were in danger. Uh, we, we've got just kids from all over the world and it is entirely donor funded and it is one of the ministries of this channel. So when you support Disciple Dojo, that is something that you're tangibly supporting is uh, giving these kids a place to come and belong. We don't preach to them. We don't evangelize them. We, we openly share that I do this because of my love for Jesus and we meet at a church. And so, but, but we have Muslim students, we have Hindu students, we, from all over, we don't, you know, if, as long as they're welcome, uh, have a good attitude, they're welcome to come train with us. So that's a part of this ministry that I love and that I really, um, am grateful for those of you that support it. So who asked that question, Gregory, because I want to send them this, the Christian standard study Bible. Who was that? Juan Urbina. All right. Juan Urbina, uh, send the information to Gregory and we will get this to you for that question. And a quick update as well for the audience. Um, mm -hmm. So Carmen said she has plenty of study Bibles, so she was fine. But she did go ahead and pick an alternate winner based on who else was, um, who spelt the, 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 the name of that book right. And that person <laughs> was, I can't pronounce this, um, no... M E K O P zero six zero two. So you know N O M O K P zero six zero two. Please send your info as well um, to the email address that was up info at biblehacking.org. Info at biblehacking.org. Um, so that's awesome. Thank you, Dr. Imes. Awesome. Yes. All right. Well, let's uh let's wrap this up, my friend. Let's give away this last Baker Illustrated. What do you say? Yep. How are we going to do this? How are we going to give away the last Baker Illustrated? Let's, what we've done so far works. It's the fairest way. Um, it's completely random. So let's give let's give a little longer. Can you do that? Or is it just yep, too many? Uh, absolutely, we can do it. Um, let's, so do, what, let's do a full minute. We did 30 seconds last time for the last. I got a call out. Who just said this? Oh, Bells. Bell said, nice C64 in the background. <laughs> and I am willing to bet some serious cash, so like a dollar or two tops, that that is an older person right there. <laughs> because you recognize that that is a C64 in the background. Kudos to you, person. Yeah, it might be time um, to get your... Get your your prostate checked. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you're, in that age. You're, you're past due for it if you know what a Commodore 64 yes. is. And don't ask me how I know that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so let's do this. We're going to go with um, 60 seconds, a full 60 seconds. All right. And next person, well, whoever wants to be entered in this prize, yep, a Commodore 64, Kimberly, whoever wants to be entered in the final Baker giveaway for the Baker Illustrated Study Bible, go ahead and drop um nine in the chat starting now all right Drop put the number nine, nine in the chat the number, the number nine. nine put it in there you're going to be entered to win again this is our <laughs> last baker illustrated study bible unless baker brings these back on the market um i don't know where to get these and this is the nicer ones these are leather um they're just, this is one of the best study Bibles. It's still not my favorite. My favorite study Bible is Zondervan's archaeological study Bible, also off the market. So if you want to reach out to Zondervan and tell them you want that one as well. And if I had copies of those, I would give it away, but I don't. Uh, but this is our last one of our of these leather-bound bakers. So we are at 44 seconds and it's flying through the chat right now. Yeah. Holy smoke. So put the number nine if you want to be entered to win this. You have to just type the number nine. And this will be our last one of the night. We got 10 seconds to go, people. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. And we end right there. All right. It's going to be a heavy um, cut and paste right there. All right, so let me drop this into. Yep, the, you do your thing, and uh, we're going to wrap it up because this will be the end. This is our last giveaway, and I'm we, we, we've been going for three hours, so I'm tired. And you guys that have stuck with it, thank you so much. Listen, everybody who's subscribed to Disciple Dojo, um, 
I really do want to thank you. It it is hard running a YouTube channel and building it and getting out there. There's so much. There's so many voices out there in YouTube land. Uh, many are helpful. Many are not helpful. Uh, and so Disciple Dojo, we really do. We we've tried to cultivate. Uh, like a good dojo, a good martial arts academy. When you step into a good martial arts academy, it's intimidating, but you feel welcome. The instructor makes you know that you belong, that they want to help you get better. They want to help you learn and grow, and they don't know everything. A good instructor will be the first to tell you, I don't know everything, but I can teach you what I've learned, and I can help get you excited about the journey of a martial artist. Well, in biblical studies, it's the same way. I barely scratch the surface of what all is out there, but I have been blessed to sit under some incredible people who know so much, who are just brilliant, and more than that, who are filled with the Holy Spirit and have a desire to help people grow. Oops. And that's what Disciple Dojo does. We want to bring together like a, a, a passionate, committed, devoted life of discipleship, spirit-filled, Jesus-following discipleship with the best in academic, rigorous, biblical scholars. And, and bringing those together, to me, that's when you have a full life of discipleship. So you don't have to be the best scholar. Um, you don't have to be the best preacher, the best evangelist. I mean, God puts you where he wants you and with the gifts that he's given you. And so some of the most godly people in this world are housekeepers. They're garbage men. They're CEOs of companies, or they are people who work the soil with their hands, literally, in, in a developing country. God and God alone determines uh, people's worth, and, and he's the one who, at the end, is going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. But our role here, my calling at Disciple Dojo, I feel, is wherever you are on that spectrum of biblical knowledge, to just take you and help you move a little further. So if you appreciate that uh, and you appreciate this ministry, the best way you can show that is by subscribing and clicking the notifications icon that that tells YouTube we want to see more of this channel. And then if you and, I, and I'll say this, if mailing all this stuff is not going to be free or cheap um, and Disciple Dojo is entirely donor funded. I mean, we, we get revenue from YouTube because we're monetized, but not not enough to cover, obviously, the uh, the cost of running a ministry. So if you feel, if you want to support Disciple Dojo, you can go to discipledojo.org slash donate, and you can give whatever amount you're able, and you can do it monthly, or you can do it one time. All of it, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. I have a board. I have a finance director. I don't see any donations that come in. They handle all that. And, um, and, and any questions about that, you can direct there. So and we, we, we have a winner. All right, so we have our final. We're gonna we're gonna end it on this. The final winner of the Baker Illustrated Study Bible is who is it, Gregory? Cats a lot. With Cats number nine. A lot. Cats a lot. Congratulations. This is headed your way. If you email the email link below to get it to Gregory. <coughs> I'm getting the address again for you, cats a lot. That's where you got to send your address to. There uh, you go. Someone else, the final couple of winners, Gnome Cop um, 0602, Juan Urbina, Timothy Lazoloda, Jason M, Cameron W, Greg Thomas. Um, some of you, I got your emails already. Some of you, I did not. Um, so go ahead and remember to send your mailing address. Yes. So we got to have the way to get this to you. Again, if you win and you're outside of the U.S., we need you to cover shipping. Um, it's just too expensive to ship internationally. If you're inside, the, if you have a U.S. shipping address or you have a friend or a family member in the U.S., we're happy to send it to them free of charge uh, and they can get it to you. But if you are international, just you got to cover shipping. And if it's prohibitive, if it's too much, just let us know. Um, and, and that way we're, we're going to do more giveaways as this channel grows, guys, we're going to do more stuff. Um, uh, Gregory and I have talked a little bit about doing some more live streams periodically. Yep. Uh, they're fun. They won't all be three hours, but then again, you know, we <laughs> maybe <don't> hit, they will, <laughs> we don't hit milestones like this every day. So, uh, so we'll, we'll talk more, stay tuned to the channel. 
if you don't already follow Disciple Dojo on Instagram and you're on Instagram, follow us at Disciple Dojo because I'm going to do some smaller giveaways there sometimes that are just for Instagram followers. But then the others will be here on the channel. So the only way to know is to, to follow us. Gregory, this couldn't have happened without you. Uh, thank you so much. This was awesome. Yeah, I so appreciate it. Guys, go subscribe Bible Hacking on YouTube. Follow Bible Hacking on Twitter um huge shout out all of you listen you guys had a bunch of questions we're going to do q and a's and once gregory i'm going to get gregory to actually teach me how to run a live stream <laughs> and then at some point i will venture to try to do this myself when i'm not doing giveaways when i can just interact with the chat because that would be i think that'd be a lot of fun there's um, clearly a big appetite for it people clearly have like serious bible questions that they need asking so there's there the the room is definitely there. I've yeah. been on a lots of these live um, streams. I can't think of one where it started with a hundred and something, lasted for three hours and change, and it's ending right now. And we're at two hundred and ninety three people that are still viewing it live right yeah. now. Like that that's is wild. The, the people clearly like the content, and I think that's good for the kingdom of God. So yeah, praise God. I, I doing what you do, it. Jam. Thank you so much. We're going to keep doing it. Guys, I'm I'm going to be next week. I'm going to be uh, leaving the country for 10 days and for a, a, a teaching trip. And then when I get back, so I'm going to have some content between now and then that's going to come out uh, more study. I've got a stack of study Bibles to review behind me that I haven't even done. So there's more coming here at Disciple Dojo. And we've got some awesome guests lined up for March. And I just lined up one in April. So we got more happening here at Disciple Dojo. Thank you, all of you, for subscribing. Gregory, my brother, thank you so much for uh, running the show. And, yeah, how do we – what's the best way to end this thing? Just say it's done. Guys, thanks for watching. As always, like we say in every video, keep training. That's it.